Secretary Proceso Alcala. Good morning, sir. From the Department of Budget and Management, um, USEC Mario Relampagos. Good morning, sir. The head of the Zamboanga Rubber Estates Corporation, ASEC, the former head, or president, ASEC uh, Alan Umali. Alan, am, am, am I correct? The former head for the years 2007 to 2009 of the Zamboanga Robert Estates Corporation, ASEC Salvador Salaco. ASEC, good morning. From the DB, Department of Budget and Management, the Director Carmen Sita Delantar. Director, I saw you here a while ago. Where did you go? <coughs> anyway, the president of the National Agribusiness Corporation. Good morning. Good morning. And the former president of NAPCOR for the years 2007 to 2009, Mr. Alan. Abeliana. Good morning, sir. Uh, can we request some quiet from the media on the on my right side, please? We are requesting some quiet from the media. Thank you. We would also like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator J.V. Ejercito. Good morning, Senator. Okay, before we start, uh, Comsec, please administer the oath of those who have not, all those who have not yet be, have not yet taken their oath, please uh, take their oath. Uh, uh, before, we'd like to acknowledge uh, the presence of Senator Cheese Escudero. And please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? I did nod your head to say yes. Thank you. Okay. Again, good morning, everyone. We'd like to acknowledge the arrival of the Senate President, Senator Frank Trillon. Good morning, sir. May we have the slide, please, the PowerPoint, please? Can we have the lights dim, please? Okay. In the last session that we had, the last hearing, we were able to see the flow of the funds starting with the request on the leftmost side, the request of the legislator to the Department of Budget and Management. And from the Department of Budget and Management, it goes to the implementing agencies. The implementing agencies, for example, as in today, we have invited the Department of Agriculture. And from the implementing agency, the mother implementing agency, we have the, um, the, the, the subsidiary agencies that are under the mother agency, namely the Sambuanga Rubber Estate Corporation and the National Agribusiness Corporation. And it's supposed to go to the beneficiaries. Next slide, please. So the COA chair was here to explain the agency's findings on the PDAF for the year 2007-2009. So the requests for the PDAF were from the implementing agencies were released to the NGOs. Next slide, please. As per COA presentation, these are the NGOs that are linked to Mrs. Napoles. 
I'd like to remind everyone that although the COA report is our starting point, uh, the resolution filed by Senator Cheese and four other senators specifically state that we should look into the Napoles scam. That's why we are zeroing on the Napoles issue. So these are the NGOs that are linked to Ms. Mrs. Napoles. Okay. Today we have invited the Department of Agriculture, the NAPCOR, and the ZAREC. We have also invited um, the DBM, Director Delantar, and USEC Relampagos. Now, based on our research, three Tatlupo, three Napoles NGOs received substantial amounts from ZAREC and NAPCOR. These are the three. SDPFFI on your most left, the MAM fee, and the PAP fee. So we'll call them SDP, SDPFFI, MAM fee, and PAP fee. But we, when we made our own research, we discovered several, um, several facts that came to fore. First, our team was able to visit and conduct ocular inspection on the offices of the three NGOs. This is the SDPFFI. It's in Binyan, Laguna, Block 40, Lot 28, Iligan Street, South City Homes. This NGO received 373.4 million pesos from legislators. Next slide, please. This is the MAMFI, or the Masaganang Ani Para sa Magsasaka Foundation Incorporated. This received 9.7 million, and it's located at 16A Guevara Street, Paltok, Quezon City. Next slide, please. And this is the POPFI, People's Organization for Progress and Development Foundation Incorporated, 24.25 million. This is in Block 23, Lot 59, Phase 3, EP Housing Village, Taguig City. Okay. As they say, the picture says a thousand words. Now, we were able to look into the corporate papers of these NGOs and found that Mr. Ben Herloy was involved in all three. Naka blue po, makikita nyo. Mr. Ben Loy was involved in all three. And a certain Colin Leok served as witness in two documents. And all three documents were notarized by attorney Joel Gordolosa. Gordola, I'm sorry. Gordola, notarized by Joel Gordola, who appears to be a notary public in Quezon City. News reports show that uh, attorney Gordola is in poor health and unable to speak for himself. His wife, his wife told reporters that attorney Gordola never notarized these documents. Okay. Upon comparing the three documents, we also found inconsistencies, particularly in the signatures of the parties. MAMFI, PAPFI, and SDPFFI. Next slide, please. Ayan, tignan nyo. Tatlong pirma ni Ben Her Loy sa tatlong uh, organizations. Pareho ba? Tapos yung witness na si Colin, Colin Leo, tignan yung signature. Hindi yata pareho. So these are signs that something is really wrong and that there seems to be a conspiracy to defraud the Filipino people of its funds. 
So with all these discoveries, we are going to ask the implementing agencies. Uh, from the DBM, it went to the Department of Agriculture, then it went to Zarek, NABCOR, and then from Zarek, NABCOR, it went to MAMFI, PAPFI, and SDPFI. Secretary Alcala, uh, you are the mother agency, you represent the mother agency, although I know you were not the secretary at that time of the period in question, but since you represent the agency today, could you enlighten this uh, committee on what you know about this whole Napoles scam? Wala kayong personal knowledge. Pero, Mr. Secretary, nung pumutok ito, at syempre, nakita mo may, Zab, may Zarek, may Nabcor, hindi po kayo nagtanong kung ano ba nangyari sa mga subsidiaries ninyo? Uh, yun po ang uh, inutusan ko po, ang kasalukuyan na kaupong Pangulo po ng Zarek, si Assistant Secretary Alan Umali, para po uh, tingnan at bigyan po ako ng report. Uh, kung meron po bang mga uh, nakasama uh, doon sa mga NGOs na dumaan nga po doon sa sinasabing uh, uh, report sa amin. At ganun din po sa NAPCOR. Uh, akin pong uh, pinagpaliwanag din po ang Pangulo ng NAPCOR na kasalukuyan si Mr. Onesto Baniget. Uh, para po uh, kung may matanong po kami uh, ng opisyal at saka po ng mga taga-media ay may tama po kami pagpapaliwanag. So, ganun po, may report na po sila. Yung mga inatasan nyo mag-report. May, mayroon po uh, mga, in, uh, actually po, yung pong sa Zarek, uh, actually po, uh, may mga papeles na po kasi siyang uh, in, in, sinomiti sa COA. Kasi even before po lumabas itong mga kwentong ito, uh, nag na po kasi kami na ito po ay talagang sasaraduhan na sapagkat hindi na po siya nag- uh, si Serbi ng original purpose niya. Na, at kasi inong ito po'y buo eh, ng aming pong paniniwala. Ah, ang paniniwala siguro po ng ating mga mambabatas is kailangan po dahil nasa infant stage pa yung uh, rubber industry sa atin pong bansa. Uh, so, uh, pero nito pong uh, panahong ito, nakita po namin na mas naunahan na po kami ang pamahalaan ng pribadong sektor Uh, sa teknolohiya at sa pagpapalawak po ng, uh, ng taniman ng rubber. Kaya we have decided na ito po isasarado na. So uh, nagkataon po na si uh, uh, Asek Alan Umali naman po ay isumiti na po yung mga papeles uh, sa OWA and I, I think uh, nandito po si, si Assistant. Okay. 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 Now, let's go to uh, Asek Salakup. Um, Asek Salakup, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Okay, you were you were the head of Z Zarek, Zamboanga Rubber Estates Corporation, during the period in question, 2007 to 2009. Am I correct? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, then these three NGOs, MAMFI, PAPFI, and SDPFI, uh, dealt with with the agency. Am I correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes. Who represented them when they dealt with you? Uh, there is one uh, legislator, le legislator uh, Congressman Valdez, who coursed his PDAF through Zirek during that period. And it was a PDAF worth 10 million pesos. He is a party list congressman, Mr. Chairman. Could you, ju could you name all the legislators then? Uh, there are five legislators who use Zirek. 
But, okay. Uh, I, I take note of your statement, Mr. Chairman, that we are focusing on the Napoles uh, NGOs. But ju just to uh, provide a clearer uh, menu of who the legislators used uh, the ZREC, uh, it was Congressman Valdez, there is uh, Congressman Velarde of the Buhay Party List, and three senators, Mr. Chairman, Senator Estrada, Senator Enrile, and Senator Revilla. But they used another NGO. As the, as the end uh, beneficiary in your uh, diagram, uh, they used the Pangkabuhayan Foundation in Corporate. Pangfi. Yes, yes, sir. The Pangfi. Yes. yes. That came up in the last... Uh, that came up in the last uh, hearing. So we have five legislators, Valdez, uh, Velarde, Velarde, as the congressman, yes, Estrada, and, uh, three senators. Revilla, and, and Senator Revilla, and yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, in your dealing with them, did they personally deal with you, these legislators? If no, not, sir. who? Who dealt with you on their behalf? Um, there was a memorandum of agreement that uh, I signed with, and none of the legislators I met personally. Uh, it was a representative of the, for example, for the Pangkabuhayan. The no, 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 no. Who dealt with you on behalf of the legislators? Nobody, sir. It was just the the personalities of Pangkabuhayan who was linking with my office at that time. So you mean, uh, no representative, walang representante ng legislators ang pumunta sa opisina mo? Wala po. There were just letters. Ah, so what are you saying? Panay dokumento lang ang dumarating. Yes, sir. Yes. What letters were these? Okay. What documents na lang? Uh, in general. Letter lang? of... Uh, an instruction that uh, the funds of the PDAF would be uh, transferred to the foundation identified. Ah, so ito yung mga tinatawag na endorsement or directive letters yes. na sinasabi. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Hoy, uh, uh, so, uh, Doy, mm. ibigay mo kay Mamfi, ibigay mo kay Pamfi, yung ganun. Yes, sir. I see. And there was also a memorandum of agreement? As, as we operationalized the letter, we had to come out with a uh, memorandum of agreement. And Mr. Chairman, this is one of the mechanisms to ensure that uh, we follow a structure and we follow a process in the implementation of such PDAF. Now, with this memorandum of agreement, the legislators sign. Am I correct? No, sir. Uh, but in the work and financial plan, which came with the proposal, which was a requirement, uh, I saw notations on the work and financial plan by the legislators. You saw notations? Mr. Yes. Chairman. Uh, it could be an initial or... <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Um, so... Do you have copies of all these documents? Sir, yes. Uh, we submitted the, all of these to uh, the COA because of the special audit. And uh, they have returned to us. No, through the current management of ZREC, it was returned uh, as uh, certified photocopies. Mr. Omali, would you, could you provide the committee with the copies of certified true copies of these documents? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Director Salaku. Ah, sorry, Asek Salako. Uh, who signed the documents on behalf of the legislators then? I saw signatures of the legislators or in letters they uh, mentioned their uh, authorized representatives. They mentioned their authorized representatives. Yes. And who were these authorized representatives? If I recall, Mr. Chairman, uh, a representative of Senator Estrada was a certain Mr. Ding Lasan. Mr. Ding Lasan? Yes. For Estrada? Yes. And for uh, Senator Enrile, an identified uh, representative was a certain Mr. Evangelista. Mr. Evangelista 
for Senator Enrile. Yes. And for Revilla. Uh, if I recall, sir, it was Senator Revilla who signed the documents. Himself. Yes. For the Valdez, Sec Congressman Valdez. Uh, both of them signed. So themselves, they, yes. just, they signed. Oh, by the way, Mr. Chairman, if I may add, there is another letter to the mother department. The mother agency. The in, Department in of Agriculture. Case, department of Agriculture. Yes. I saw letters also from the legislators uh, saying that uh, the, their respective PDAFs will be coursed through the Department of Agriculture. Do you have them in po the, your possession? Uh, right now, sir, no. But Do you I'm, know of the pre the, where, where the documents are located? Sir, right those now? were the ones we submitted to the COA, COA, and they have returned to us, as I understand with the present yes. president. Yes. Um, Mr. Mali, you're hereby directed to give us certified two copies of all documents pertaining to this um, issue. Yes, Your Honor, we will provide. Thank you, thank you. And um, in the case of Senator Enrile, he did not sign. It's a certain Mr. Evangelista. Uh, sir, two notes. Um, in yes. one letter, I saw a letter from the office of Senator Enrile, but it was signed by a certain attorney, Lucila Reyes. Lucila Reyes. If that, if if I remember correctly. And in that letter, it was also mentioned that uh, an authorized representative of a certain Mr. Evangelista would be representing the office. Would be representing the office. Yes. Okay, so le let's recap. For Congressman Valdez and Congressman Velarde, they signed it themselves. Yes, sir. For Senator Estrada, a certain Mr. Ding Lasan signed it. Sir, there were also communications from the office of Senator Estrada, which the senator himself signed. Which the senator also signed? Yes. Himself. Okay. Yes, because we're dealing not with just one document, several documents. Yes, sir. Correct. And, and Mr. Chairman, if I may add, there were several projects. Yes. Uh, of different uh, PDAF amounts, no? Different amounts, different projects. Yes. 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 So there are several communications. Okay. Uh, for Senator Revilla, he signed it himself. Yes, I recall because he only had one project. And for, yes, Senator Enrile, we already did, no? Okay. Now, when there was, when, when, when the documents were signed, um, was there a ceremony of some sort? A walang ceremony, no, basta pirma no. na lang dumating sa inyo. It was just uh, forwarded to me that they were signed by the, then the president of my, uh, as, a, as my partner. Okay. And just arrived at my office. Okay. Now, who dealt with you on behalf of the NGOs? Name the NGOs and their representatives. Uh, sir, uh, personally, no one. Uh, I just relied on the operations people of my office, of Zirek office. I have... Walang uh, humarap, walang humarap nobody, sayo from sir. the... Nobody. Huh? I just, just okay. relied on the communications and uh, everything was uh, operated by uh, my junior staff who met. I, 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 Who? I, I heard. So you mean your junior staff was the one that dealt with them? Who? Nagaharapan. At some point, Siguro, somebody's sir. got to face somebody. Sir, especially in the delivery of the documents. May I know the, the name of your staff? Uh, we had a project coordinator. His name is Mr. Adriano Inovero. Unfortunately, Mr. Chairman, he passed away October of 2009. He passed away. You mean Mr. Inovero was the only one that dealt with them? For this particular activity, sir. Because um, we were a coordinative office for the PDAF projects as we uh, partnered with the identified beneficiaries. So, wala, na, wala ka nang ibang staff that dealt with them? We had a uh, project coordinator, uh, junior pro uh, assistant project coordinator, and an accountant. Name, please, both. Uh, the assistant project coordinator was Marian Obio, O-B-I-O, and our accountant for the PDAF matters was Miss Lolita Hamilia. Lolita Hamilia, are they still with the department? Yes, sir. If, uh, if I refer to President O'Malley, I believe they're still with Zirek. Okay. Uh, we will call them at the next meeting. Uh, Comsec. Uh, 
please cause their invitation at the next hearing. So, wala kang, in the course of all these years, these are three years, nothing suspicious came about to your attention from your staff. Wala ba nagsabi, boss, mukhang may nakikita kaming alanganin dito. Boss, may ano dito. Wala, sir, kasi we had our mechanisms that... Uh, what were your mechanisms? Sir... Did uh, you ever check whether these NGOs were legit? Yes, that was the first step. Uh, we required SEC documents, BIR documents, uh, mayor's permit, and uh, certified financial statements. Okay, so SEC papers, BIR papers, permits from the local government, and what was the other one? Uh, Statement certified of, uh, 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 by a CPA of their three-year financial position. Sa makatwid, sa, makatwid, sa makatwid, you just relied on the um, documentation. Yes. There was no uh, visitation of the NGO office. There was no face-to-face -face interview with the officers. No, sir. Ah, uh, okay. So hanggang dun lang ang... ang, ang uh, verification nyo. And uh, uh, through the, in, in the course of all these three years, uh, did you ever bother to check whether these projects were fully liquidated? Sir, that was the second mechanism, the memorandum of agreement. And uh, we made it a point that the agreement would come in tranches. 15% uh, 35% second release, third release would be 40%, and the final release would be 10%. Now, on each... Baki ulit lang, please. Uh, sir, uh, slowly, please. The tranches are as follows. 15% uh, first release, 35% uh, second, 40%, and 10% final. And each of the releases should be liquidated properly. Uh as attested to by an auditor, independent auditor. And in most cases, it was a certified public accountant that would certify the proper liquidation of the funds released. Ah, a, C a private CPA? Yes, sir. Uh, so I guess you have you have these documents? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Uh, Mr. Mali, please uh, submit them. Thank you. Uh, and by the way, Mr. Chairman, each... Uh, trench liquidation was noted by the legislator. What do you mean noted? Uh, he's Signed? certified, yes. Or his duly appointed representative. Signed by the legislator? Or his, yes. and Or his duly uh, appointed re uh, representative. So the liquidation documents were um, it was for purpose noted. of liquidation, you, you just relied on documents also? Yes, sir. As, yes. A sign of good faith. Uh, uh, you know, with yes. All, with all of these. Yes. Now, um, I'm just very curious why you did not tap uh, COA for li liquidation. Sir, Instead, there was you, an you instance that uh, one of the projects, if I recall, was uh, reviewed by our uh, in-house COA. There was one project. I think ah, just one. Just I, one. I, I, just I, one I, out of the many. If I recall. This. So in all these years, 2007, 2008, 2009, you never noticed anything suspicious. You never got any word from your staff below you. Those were... Sir, uh, there was... Uh, the next in line to me is the treasurer. Okay. At that time, he was also an assistant secretary. Name, and, please. Uh, he was assistant secretary. He is assistant secretary, Ed Nolasco. Ed Nolasco. He okay. served as our treasurer. And uh, he was already uh, mentioning that... Uh, there were a lot of observations by the COA. And he oh, I thought you did not bring in the COA. No, sir. Uh, uh, on, on the terminal, uh, let's say, for example, at the end of 2007, COA already reviewed or made the review or 2008. Okay. So there may, were already observations. Okay, may observations yes. na. And I so, mean, if na ito si Ed Nolasco uh, sa'yo. Uh, in fact, uh, Anong binubulong niya? Sabi niya, sir, marami hong observations. Sabi ko, uh, well, work on it, look, check it out properly. And I believe, Mr. Chairman, he wrote a letter 
to the legislators to to put a stop to using Zirek as a what, what year was this? Either 2008 or 2009, sir. I have to check on the on the documents. Okay. And um, in those years that these all all these happened, you did you go further than just to tell Mr. Did you tell Ed Nolasco to write the letters, or he did it on his own volition? Uh, he did it on his own because, sir, uh, in our operation setup, I was just the I was the president, but most of the operations I delegated to, uh, to? The, oper the operations people headed by Asek Nolasco. By Asek Nolasco. And Asik Nolasco is still in the DA. No more. He retired now, sir. He retired. he retired, but I suppose his whereabouts can be ascertained. No, I see him, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, the DA is hereby directed to provide us uh, the details as to where the whereabouts of uh, former Asik um, Ed Nolasco. Uh, Mr. Salakop, uh, Asik Salakop, uh, do you know Janet Lim Napoles? No, sir. Do you know Ben Herloy? No, sir. So you've, in all your years, you've never, never um, uh, come across them or know of them? No, sir. Okay. And what do you say to the allegations that it is the implementing agency that should uh, check on the validity of the NGOs. Sir, at that time, as I said, we had the mechanisms on working on the documents of the uh, identified uh, foundations to which the PIDA funds were conduited to. But despite that, and despite your uh, ASEC, uh, Assistant Secretary Ed Nolasco, telling you that there's there are already findings, in other words, may nakikita na, may umuusok na, uh, you still just relied on the documents? Uh, I believe that's why uh, my treasurer then wrote already the, the, the concerned legislators. The concerned legislators. Okay. We'll get back to you, um, Asek Doy Salakop. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Alan Haviliana. Mr. Chair. Can yes. I just ask what our procedure is? Would you like us to wait until you've asked all your questions? Yes, we will, okay. and then I will relinquish yeah, just the... So, just so okay. we know, thank you. Yes. Uh, Mr. Alan Haviliana? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, good morning. Good you morning. were the president of NAPCOR? Yes, sir. Past president. 2007 to 2009? Yes. Again, Mr. the same questions. Uh, who were the legislators that had... Um, funds that funneled funds through the NABCOR through the respective NGOs named? Yes, Mr. Chairman. For the congressman, congressman, I don't have the data, Mr. Chairman, because I retired from NABCOR uh, way back uh, this October 2000. Okay. And, uh, you you retired, Kelan? 2011, Your Honor. October. 2011? Yes. Okay. And uh, I don't have any data as of now. Who has the data? I Mr. Baniget, uh, you're the present uh, head of NAPCOR, am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have this data? We have all the documents with us, uh, Your Honor. Uh... Who were the legislators in the period in question who funneled funds through NABCOR? Well, we have a lot of them, but... Uh, um, uh, Mr. Chair, allow me to confer with my uh, staff. The go ahead, go ahead. But you should have prepared. You know when these questions should have been asked. Should have prepared. It's just a copy. Sorry. 
so sorry, Mr. Chair. At this point, we'd uh, like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Grace Po and Senator uh, Sunny Angara. Good morning. Uh, while we're waiting, um, I'm ready here. Uh, Mr. Mali, uh, you're hereby just to reiterate. You're hereby uh, directed to produce all the documents with regards to this issue. Walang pili pili, paki submit lahat ng documents. Pero kahit certified through kapi, no? Para may kopya pa rin kayo ng original lahat ng documents to this committee. I'm ready. Uh, okay, Mr. Baniget. Uh, first, from May uh, 21, 2009, Congressman Arthur Pingoy Jr., 2nd District, South Cotabato, uh, Congressman Adam Relson Hala, 3rd District, Bohol, Congressman Alfonso Mari, 2nd District, Oriental Mindoro, Congressman Al Francis Bichara, Congressman Alipio Cirillo, Congressman Antonio Cuenco. Speak closer to the mic, please. Yes, sir. Congressman Antonio Yapa, Jr. Congressman Antonio Co. Congressman Arturo Rob Robes. Congressman Arthur Celeste. Congressman Danilo Lagbas, Congressman Edgar Chato, Congressman Edgar Valdez, Congressman Eduardo Roquero, Congressman Edgar San Luis, Congressman Edgar Espinosa, Congressman Eduardo Gulas, Congressman Erico Basilio, Congressman Emilio Macias, Congressman Emil Ong, Congressman Erwin Chongbian, Congressman Florencio Miraflores, Congressman Franklin Bautista, Congressman Georgidi Agabao, Congressman Glenn Chong, Congressman Iggy Arroyo, Congressman Isidro Ungap, Congressman Jesse Lapus, Congressman Joseph Santiago, Congressman Julio Ledesma, Congressman Joel Villanueva, Congressman Lorna Silverio, Congressman Leonardo Montemayor, Congressman Mariano Piamonte, Congressman Manuel Aguiao, Congresswoman Maria Rachel J. Arenas, Congresswoman Maria Victoria C. Alvarado, Congressman Michael John Duavit, Congressman Mark Leandro, Congresswoman Maria Evita Arago, Congresswoman Maria Isabel Climaco, Congresswoman Marina Clarete, Congressman Mark Douglas Cagas, Congresswoman Nerisa Corazon, Congressman Nel Tupas, Congressman Pablo John F. Garcia, Congressman Pedro Pancho, Congressman Prospero Nograles, Congressman Raul Daza, Congressman Rene Velarde, Congressman Robert Raimundo Estrella, Congressman Rodolfo Valencia, Congressman Reno Lim. Mr. Mr. Baniget, yes, uh, sorry to interrupt, no, but uh, just to clarify, these are the legislators that funnel their funds through NABCOR to this a uh, to the uh, Napoles. Uh, no, sir. No. Uh, you, you you ask us for the 
the PDAF. I'm just answering, sir. Just the PDAF? Yes. Okay. Okay, then. Uh, let's limit then. Let's limit it then, Muna, to the Napoles. Uh, okay, sir. To the Napoles, since yes, that is the mandate, Muna. Okay. The Napoles camp. All right. So give me the list of those in the I Napoles can, camp. Yes, Your Honor, I can provide. Maybe it's. Uh, I am not incompetent to uh, to identify the the Napoles uh, NGOs or whatsoever because uh, I really don't know what happened and transpired then. No. Yung tatlo, yung nandito. Ah, yung tatlo lang po. I'll try to verify and locate uh, your audio. Hindi, ganito na lang. Merong walong AG NGO na present ng COA last time. Okay? Uh, okay. Um, SDFFI and the other agencies and the other uh, NGOs could you provide us with, with the legislators that funneled to NAPCOR to these NGOs? Yes, Your Honor. We'll do. We'll provide you with a document, Your Honor. Are you saying they cannot answer now? Ah. Can you answer now? We, we, we'll just segre segregate it. Because the yung, yung, yung binabasa mo kanina, just to clarify, that is the general list of all legislators that funneled funds to NABCOR. That's but right. that does not mean yes. that they funneled it through these uh, fake NGOs. That's right, Mr. Mr. Chair. Okay, to be clear about that. Okay, so now, in fairness, I would like to ask you to give us only the legislators that funneled the funds through NABCOR and then to the fake Napoles NGOs. Ito, nasa board yung NGOs. Uh, uh, sir, let me just uh, get the details of that. Kasi sa dami po niyan. At saka hindi ko rin po alam yung mga... Though I know and I, I saw it right now, can you, will you please allow me to... Okay, extract? since uh, you still have to collate everything. Yes, um, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Haviliana, yes, you were the head of the NABCOR at that time. Yes, sir. Okay. Now... Sino yung mga legislators na nag-funnel sa NABCOR dyan sa mga fake NGOs? Mr. Chairman, uh, I don't have the records now. I'm not quite familiar kung sino sino. Zero memory? Not zero, but... Uh, so what is not zero? Give us the one that's not zero. Uh, well, I can tell you about the senators, but uh, the rest... You know, tell me what is not zero. Tell me what your memory tells you. Tell the committee. I know. Tell the people. I know Australia. Uh, uh, yeah, that's. Uh, sino ng Australia? Sino pa po? So it's not totally zero, but you're not totally zero. It's just one name, and you don't even remember the first name. Yes, Mr. Chairman. That seems hard to believe, uh, Mr. Haviliana. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Can I browse maybe some of the documents? Yes, of course. Take a look. Take a look at the documents. Sige. Para ma-refresh naman. Oh, Mr. Patiga, share it with him. After all, it happened during his time. Wag mo itago sa kanya. Okay, while we're waiting for um, uh, Director Susan Garcia of the Commission on Audit, um, Senator um, Escudero requested the uh, a copy of the Phil Forrest COA report last last uh, meeting uh, last week, no? And would you know if the COA report has come out already, for the record. Please speak into the mic.
the special audit, not the regular audit? Uh, sir, it, it was handled by another director. Uh, I have not seen the report yet, pero I'm not very sure kung it was already released or not. Sinong director po? Director Fina. No, no. What's the name again? Director Rufina Lakindanum. Rufina? Lakindanum, sir. Okay. Is she around? Is she around? Director Susan, is she around? Ayun, Speak it to yes. the mic, please. Yes, sir. She's around. Morning po. I just want to find out kung meron na pong special COA audit report on the Phil Forest. Uh, uh, we are still uh, finalizing the report po. Ah, so hindi pa nare-release? Hindi pa po. Okay, that's all I wanted. Please furnish this committee an official copy uh, once you have... Uh, when, when do you think it will be released nga pala? Uh, baka po sa end of this month. End of September? Opo. Uh, Tagal-tagal pa pala, no? Hindi po. Once the chair po arrives, uh, we'll be releasing... By the way, when will the chair arrive? Uh, baka po sa third week or second week. Oh, sige. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, please uh, furnish this uh, committee of the uh, okay. that report once it's uh, officially released. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Mr. Haviliana, are we all right na? Has our, our memory rating uh, increased? Mr. Chairman, it's difficult for me to pinpoint somebody if I'm not 100%. That it's might be difficult for me to pinpoint somebody that uh, I'm not 100% sure if they are, uh, they use that agency, uh, NGO. What was your procedure when you, when you, when you accredited, uh, when you received uh, this request from legislators? Then when you accredited the NGOs, what was your procedure? Ikwento mo nga, anong procedure mo? Mr. Chairman, it's almost the same as uh, with Zirek. Uh, we are following the same uh, format. And uh, the first step really is to, it is true that uh, we validate all of these things through paper. How did you validate them? We validate all the... Please, please bring the mic closer to so, your... We check on their SEC registration. Uh, we check on their business permits, uh, their work and financial plan. I don't know. So, in other words, mga dokumento rin? Yes, sir. Hindi kayo lumabas sa dokumento. Hindi kayo pubisita sa mga NGO. Hindi kayo bumisita sa, sa offices nila at uh, nag-interview ng mga tao nila. Hindi ako, sir. Walang mga legislators ang lumapit sa'yo? Wala ako, sir. So, anong pupunta sa'yo? Dokumento lang? Dokumento lang, sir. Walang, sino, sino sa mga NGOs ang nakipag-deal sa inyo? Si Ben or Lu Louis, sir. Ah, so kilala mo si Mr. Ben Pumupunta Louis? Pumupunta sa opsina, sir. Pumupunta. So kilala mo? Yes, sir. Personally? Uh, sa opsina, sir. Yes. Yes. So si Janet Lim Napoles, kilala mo rin? Yes, sir. Pupunta rin sa opisina mo? No, sir. Nagkikita kayo somewhere else? We have a meeting uh, sa, sa coffee shop ng Discovery Suites. Discovery Suite Coffee Shop? Yes. How often? I think Three years month. yan, ha? How often? I think twice. Uh, twice, Mr. Chair. A month? A week? Twice, uh, no. Total. Remember, you're under oath here, Total Mr. Javiliana. You are under oath here. Yes, Mr. Chairman. That's In, twice kami nag-meet. Twice, how often? That's the total. In a month? In a week? Uh, the whole. Total. Total of what? Three years? One year? Two years? The whole. Okay. Now, Mr. Ben Loy is well known to you then? Yes, sir. And he represented himself for which uh, NGOs? Uh, I'm not familiar with that, but... He no, no, no. Pag, pag humaharap siya sa iyo, 
Siyempre, I presume it's to follow up some project, right? Yes, sir. And he says, oh, yung project ni Ma'am Fe, oh, yung project ni Pang Fe, ganun yun, di ba? Kailangan may pangalan eh. Sa dami kasi sa yung, yung mga names kasi sa Rekrat. Okay, itong mga names ba? Familiar ba sa'yo? Huwag uh, mo sabihin, hindi mo naman maalala itong mga to. Bala, sir, uh, those are... Ang dami kasi yan. Ma ang dami. Walo uh, lang yan eh. Uh, Ilan yan? Walo lang yan. Uh, oh. Tatlong taon ka nakikipag-deal sa kanya. Uh, Walo lang yan. Huwag mo sabihin, hindi wala ka naman maalala. Uh, they, 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 they... So, ano yung mga organizations na re-represent Mr. Louie? Well, you mentioned three, I think. The... No, not me. What I mentioned... The, with what you recall, because you were dealing with Mr. Louie, personally. Uh, you was mentioned, uh, what? Not what I was, what I mentioned, what you recall, Mr. Avellana. Answer the question. The SDPFFI. Okay, no. SDPFFI. Now we're getting some progress. Come on, what else? Mamfi. Mamfi. Yes. Okay, next. And, uh, I'm not sure about Pop. About uh, Pop DFI. Pop DFI. Uh, so those three. I'm not sure about the, the last one. You're not sure, but you seem to recall. Seems to recall. Okay. At this point, we'd like to acknowledge the arrival of Senator Cynthia Villar. Good morning, ma'am. Mr. Haviliana, do you at during that time that in the period of three years, did you also have an implementing staff under you? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Who are they? Uh, the head of VP for Finance. Uh, and some Name. Uh, Name. Victor Kakal. Victor Kakal. Kakal. Yes. With a C. With a C. And he's still with the Department of Agriculture? Still with uh, NABCOR. Still with NABCOR? Yes, sir. Okay. Comsec, uh, please uh, cause his invitation. Next hearing. Shield. Next. Uh, Next. Shear. I forgot the family of Shear. Pardon? Shear. S-H-Y-R. S-H-Y-R. Yes. Shear. Yes, sir. Anyan, first name, last name? First name. First name. Staff mo ito for three years. Uh, they're not directly under me, Mr. Chairman. But you dealt with them because you said this were your implementing staff uh -huh. for three years. So again, yeah, take a look at whatever documents you want to look at. Give me a last name. Montoya. Montoya. Yes. Sheer Montoya. Male, female? That's female. Female. Okay, title? Accounting assistant. Accounting assistant. Uh -huh. Okay, who else? Uh, Are they still with the DA? Itong si Sheer Montoya. Wala na ho, sir. Wala na. Secretary Alcala, please uh, furnish the, the committee with the whereabouts of this certain Sheer Montoya. Thank you. Sino pa? Si Dexter Pakulan. Dexter Pakulan. PA. Is a property. Pakulan. Yes. yes. Title. Uh, property officer. Property officer. Now, these people implemented, were in charge of me seeing to it that these projects were implemented. Yes? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. In the course of all these three years, uh, in the course of all these three years, was there not a report to you na may kaduda-dudang nangyayayari? Wala, sir. Wala? Yes, sir. Hindi kayo nagpa-audit? Hindi kayo nagpa-liquidate? We... Well, there, there are liquidations. Did you follow the same procedure as uh, ASEC DOI sa LACO? May percentages sa release? Yes, sir. Meron? Okay. So, these things are documented. Who certifies them? In the case of uh, ASEC Salakup or Zarek, there was a private CPA that certified. Who certified your liquidations? C the liquidations C of the of NGOs? The, uh, CPA is CPA. 
You seem to very uh, be very shaky with your answers. CPA, sir. CPA. Uh. As in the case of Zarek, was the uh, liquidation signed by the legislators? Yes, sir. They were. Okay. Uh, Mr. Umali. Mr. Uh, Mr. Umali. Baniget. Uh, Baniget. Mr. Baniget, yes. Uh, please furnish this uh, committee with all the documents, including the liquidation documents and the work and financial plans. No? Uh, are, are these there right now? Can you state the legislators? Um, we will furnish you with a... You're not ready, in other words, right now. Okay. Mr. Javeliana, which legislators, again, which legislators funneled these, uh, their funds through NABCOR to these agents, to these uh, NGOs? Itong walong agency, uh, walong NGOs na ito. Uh, we have uh, Senator uh, Revilla. Senator Revilla. Senator Enrile. Senator Enrile. And Senator uh, Estrada. Jim. Senator Estrada. Yes, sir. Sino pa? Uh, were the work and financial plans also uh, initialed by the legislators, Mr. Villana? That's part of the process, yes, sir. So that's a yes. Uh, Sino pa mga legislators? We have uh, Hunasan, but I think. Uh, is that part of the? It's not part of the Napoles. It's it's the Sagip Buhay. It's not part of it. It's, it's not part of the Napoles. Why? I don't know, sir. It's not. You don't there. know. You it's made the conclusion. There, now you don't know why. It's not there, sir. It's in the the one mentioned. Uh, what is the um, name of the NGO? Sagip Buhay People Support Foundation. Sagip Buhay People Support Foundation. People Support Foundation. Support Foundation, Inc. Okay, sino pa? Sa Congressman. You've been dealing with them for three years through Mr. Loy, Finafalo Apian, in behalf of these NGOs, in behalf of these legislators. Sino pa? As mentioned earlier by Mr. Paniket, sir, my madami kasi yan. It's quite confusing kung sino sino. Who used this foundation, sir? Sino pa? Talaga madami yan. Sige. Sino pa? That's what we're here for. Mr. Javeliana. I have to look at the laser and uh, look at the foundation that they're using. You have to check? Yes, sir. Okay. So next hearing, you can come up with a comprehensive report. Yes? Sir, I don't have the... Mr. Baniget will lend you all the documentary support that you want. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Baniget, please uh, furnish him all the documentary support. Yes, sir, Honor. Mr. Javeliana. Yes, sir. Um, next hearing, you will make a report. Based on your memory, based on your on the documents that Mr. Badiget will show you. Yes, thank you. Who are the legislators? And uh, Mr. Badiget, you will provide us with the documents. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, can I just ask for a document in connection with what you're yes, asking? Yes, please, go ahead. For both um, implementing agencies, 
I don't believe the COA report that we received last week uh, broke down the the total PDAFs um, used in each implementing agency. The breakdown was by NGO. So I believe we can ask the implementing agencies to give us the totals that they received from the PDAF and the NGO, the Napolis NGOs. Yes. Because we don't have those totals. So yes. like I have a 272 million that went through ZREC, but only through one NGO. So what about the others? Correct. Well taken. See the bigger picture. Well taken. Again, um, um, Mr. Umali and Mr. Baniged, please zero in on the Napolis uh, NGOs and the legislators. Yes, Mr. Umali. Uh, Mr. Chair, we only have one uh, alleged Napolis NGO in our corporation that passed through our corporation. Only one? Only one, sir. Do you confirm that, uh, Asek Salako? Yes, sir. I mentioned that in the... Which which one is this? Uh, SDPFFI, and it was Congressman Valdez. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's only 10 million. You... Yung pang fee, yung pang, pang No, sir. Uh, as I reviewed the newspaper reports, it's not part of the uh, Napoles group. Can we have the slide on the all the NGOs, please? Wala, isa lang dito? So, so po, yung SDP FFI na dinaan ni Congressman Valdez. Yun lang po ang dumaan sa ZREC. The other PDAFs that went through ZREC are Fort Pangkabuhayan Foundation, which is not in this lineup. Pangkabuhayan Foundation. Foundation Incorporated. Director Susan, kasama ba to sa Napoles yung Pangkabuhayan Foundation na sinasabi ni... Hindi rin po namin nakita sa newspaper yun na part nung... Napoles. Kaya 8 lang po yung amin ni-report. Ah, at any rate, uh, when we have the whistleblowers here, then we can ask them to identify which exactly are the Napoles um, uh, NGOs. Senator Bamakino. Just a quick question. Uh, Director Susan, do you concur with um, with ZREC that there was only one Napoles NGO uh, involved with uh, ZREC from 2007 to 2009? My recollection last week was that there was more. No? Maybe you can clarify. Yes, sir. Based on our schedule, there is only one, the SDF PFFI. Thank you. Okay, thank you. At this point, I would like to yield to the other legislators who... Senator... Um, Mr. Chair, may I avail of my time because I yielded last week? Yes, Senator Pia, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, well, just to just to continue on this issue, just to uh, be consistent with the report of COA, under Pangkabuhayan, uh, ZREC has the amount of 272 million. So that is not part of the Napoles NGOs? Yes, ma'am. Based on the newspaper account, because we do not have, uh, we only base our our report on the newspaper na yun ang mga NGO. So this report that you showed us is not based on your audit. Which, uh, this, I, I'm I'm oh, reading one, I'm reading from this is a COA report from your website, ah, yes, and the amount mm -hmm. under Zirac is 272.5 million. So I'm just clarifying if this then does not in, this this amount includes NGOs not part of the Napoles. Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. Just a because our report, ma'am, is I don't think that the COA at this point can say which one is the police, which one is not. All that they're saying is that some uh, some accounts have not been liquidated, 
some uh, NGOs appear to be fake, but I don't think that they are in a position, based on the report, to say which one is the police, which one is not, just on their COA report. So that's why they keep on saying, based on the media reports. Okay. Senator Pia, please continue. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I direct my question both to COA and DBM. No? Um, in the report that was delivered by your chair last week, there were, um, there were mentions of the anomalies that were noted by COA. My first question is, would you know if the the projects that were included in the report were part of the PDAF menu because from my experience it's extremely difficult to pass projects other than the usual schools, hospitals, medical assistance because the requirement of DBM is very strict. So I want to know how this happened and so, so I address my question to both DBM and then to COA. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Senator. May, may I request presentation of the menu that we based our release documents on? And a uh, third slide, please. Next, please. Okay, uh, these are the menu for the periods covered, 2007, 2009. And this will show to you the general areas where projects could be funded. And I think there are 12 areas here, A, B, C, D, up to L. The next column are the specific programs and projects that should be, that qualify for funding under the PDAF. And uh, third column are the qualified implementing agencies. So if we go by the line here in the presentation of the menu, if the senators would like it, we'll go one by one. On education, these are purchase of IT equipment. Um, I I don't think we're okay. dealing with education, so let, let's skip that. Let me just give you a specific example, because under ZEREC, it, it uh, refers to farm implementation, and farm implements and seeds, from se fr seeds, and then conduct training and provision for training. Where is that in the menu? First of all, ZEREC is not one of the implementing agencies in the list. So, so but I, isn't the ZEREC part of DA, or what is ZEREC? D, 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 DA, right? Oh, so it's DA. So yeah, so our release there was to... So to because you said it is not an implementing agency, are you saying that they need special permission or it doesn't go without saying that because they're under DA, then therefore they are accredited? They, they are not? Uh, what I'm saying, Ms. Madam Senator, is that when we release this sorrow, it is to those agencies listed here. So to DA? In this case, in your particular example, if these are farm implements, it could be with the department. Okay, so I just assume, and please, I'll just take it because I, I saw, uh, sorry, what is your name again? Salako. You were nodding your head. So from DA, it's endorsed directly to you. So, so can you continue? Is that part of livelihood? What happened to your slide? Okay, so the Department of Agriculture here uh, is, is mentioned in... Uh, Livelihood, not letter C. Well, DA. livelihood, letter C. The implementing agencies are DTI, DA. Yes, I, I know. Yeah. You're, I don't, let's not waste the time okay. of the... I'm already mm -hmm. helping you with the answer. Yeah. Livelihood, DA. So, I ask you specifically, farm implements and seeds. Pasok ba yan Yes, uh, it's part of uh, the uh, livelihood... CIDSS program, Your Honor. So it is. So everything I mentioned earlier is clearly within the the um, project list. Okay, and and Correct, uh, Your Honor. and um and I'll now direct my question to COA. And so because it is part of the official um, project list, then 
that on its own doesn't raise any bells for you. Doesn't ring any bells. In other words, because it is consumable, because napakalaki ng amount, wala yon. That, that in itself is not questionable as far as Co is concerned. Uh, we have to validate the documents, not only the, the project. So we uh, we determine the beneficiaries and yes, uh, the supply exactly. and all that. So so it's so, the other factors yes, yes, that yes, would yes. ring a bell for you, yes. not just the fact Initially, that it's consumable. Oh, yes. I ask this question because this um, issue has come about that consumable should be taken out of the menus, no? I, I'm sure you've heard this kind of. So I, I'm not. I'm not making any statement. I'm just raising that that concern, and um, so we put that on record when we when we look, when the legislative body looks at this further. I'll go more specifically now to the uh, reports given by ZTEC and NABCOR. Um, when we speak of the the uh, check and balances or liquidation, not to to ensure the project is implemented properly. When a, a MOA is signed, this is signed between the implementing agency, the suppliers, the NGOs, who are the parties involved? I ask this question again because under ZTEC report in COA, it mentioned 42 suppliers, 60 suppliers, and again, it may not be related to this Napolis case, but we use it as an example. So, does Mr. Salakop, do you look into the existence of those suppliers as well? Because the COA report then said that some of these suppliers denied um, delivering or dealing with the NGO. I'm referring to page 150 of the... Uh, report, but I'm just using it as an example because this is really for us to understand the process and to understand if the safeguards are in place, which I guess they are not from what happened. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the, the suppliers are in direct link with the foundation. None of the, not of the Zurich. So you do not look into that even though we're talking of 272 million pesos when you accredit an NGO which you already said earlier you just look at the SEC um, registration the local government permits then you don't anymore ma'am it the only time we look into that is when they submit their tranche liquidation. The tranche liquidation. Uh -oh. and, and that comes, this, this MOA um, that you mentioned where there's 15, 35, that is over a period of one year or longer? There are projects that covered one year uh, somewhere. So, uh, so let's, let's use a one-year example. Okay. Yes. So in other words... If it's divided by four, do I assume that more or less per quarter? So in the first quarter, there would have been one tranche released. So it Mom, it's a case-to-case -case basis. Okay. Now, I'm just trying to understand that how soon do you get feedback and how soon do these liquidation reports get to you such that it would raise be alarm bells that there's something wrong, that, that um, the liquidation is not proper so that we can be guided accordingly, both COA, DBM, the legislative body, in, in ensuring that this doesn't happen again. What happened is they cannot receive the next tranche if we do not find satisfactory. So in this case, did, did the, were the tranches, did you deliver fully or did it stop somewhere? No, they were fully... Uh, uh, forwarded to the well so then and again because this is not purely a Napolis um, we cannot isolate this no as, as DBM was as uh, COA was saying but in the in your in COA's report on 272 million where you already noted a lot of um, anomalies then clearly your safeguards did not work because if the next tranche will not be released until it is fully, the first was fully liquidated, you release this. Um, we also uh, banked on the certification of the certified public accountant that uh, every everything and we, and we in the expenditures. The, Mr. Chair, we called that certified public accountant because 
if you, they rely on that certification alone and that vouched for the credibility of the project, then that's, that's where one of the big, um, that, that's, where, that's where some of this could have been detected. Because the, yes, the, we fully agree. The, the certified public accountant uh, certifies that the documents are correct and true. Was what answer was given why COA was not used? Why was it? Uh, why did you not use COA again, uh, directors? Uh, sir, uh, it was a post audit. Uh, I, I believe in 2008, it was a post audit approach. In 2007, we had a pre audit approach, but then. No, no. I, just I, for purpose of liquidation of the project, why did you not use the commission on audit? Why, why, why a, a pri private CPA? Uh, sir, I have to check on the documents as to why it was not followed. And by the way, while, while you were you were dealing with this, uh, this, um, these uh, legislators and the NGOs, uh, you were releasing in tranches. Yes. And therefore, from time to time, you had contact with the legislators or their representatives and the NGOs. Am I correct? Sir, the working staff of the of the NGO, none of the legislators. Yeah, but who, who, uh, who, who of the, none of the legislators? No. The representatives? None. Pani dokumento pumupunta sa'yo? Yes, sir. How about you, Mr. Haveliana? You said that you met Mr. Louis several times. Uh, talk to the mic, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman. So, there were there were constant dealings with Mr. Louis and with the representatives of the the um, legislators and the legislators. Not directly with me, but we have a uh, point person to him, Mr. Chairman. Who is your point person? Uh, the head of uh, VP Finance. Sino, sino? The head of VP Finance. Please name names. Uh, uh, Ms. Roda Roda. Uh, Miss Roda Mendoza. Roda Mendoza, babae, Miss? Oh, yes. Still with the DA? Wala na ho. Okay, Secretary Alcala, please provide us information. You had meetings with uh, Janet Lim Napoles in Discovery Suites? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Bakit sa Discovery ka pupunta? Ba't di mo pinapupunta sa, sa opisina mo? I was invited to go there. You were invited to yes, go there. Uh, Anong pinakain sa yo? Wala ho. Uh, coffee lang. Coffee lang. Uh, uh, anong pinag-usapan nyo? Sino mga projects? Anong legislators ang napag-usapan? Wala kami pinag-usapan na PDAP. I briefed her about uh, NABCOR, Mr. Chairman. You briefed her about NABCOR? Yes, Mr. Chairman. You did not talk about any NGO or with about the project of any legislator? Wala ho, Mr. Chairman. In the second meeting, because you said you had two meetings. Yes. It's more of a follow-up of the what we have discussed. You mean you briefed her, and then you briefed her again no, on the second more, meeting? it's more, more of the follow-up already. Follow-up of what? Which project? Of, of what we have discussed, Mr. Chairman. Of which project? Well, I briefed him, her about uh, what is NAVCOR and uh, what are... Which the, project? Uh, yung uh, corn... Processing centers now. Which legislator? No, it's a project. Which legislator? It's a project of NAVCOR. Are you sure you only met her twice? You're under oath? Yes, sir. Mr. Haviliana, this is very serious. Yes, sir. You are under oath? Yes, sir. And your memory seems to fail you, according to you. Uh, huh? Four years now, you said, you know. Pero okay, this one, I'm sure. you better make sure you come up with answers next hearing. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Senator Pia, please. Yes. Mr. Chair, on the process of uh, accrediting, accredit, accrediting NGOs, may I ask the two, well, the former president and uh, the current president of uh, ZTEC, um, what, what is the accreditation process? Um, well, you've mentioned the SEC registration, but in terms of, and the financial reports, but in terms of knowing the capacity of this NGO in delivering the services, do you check on that? 
Because they may have three years financial statements, but not in delivering to one million beneficiaries, literally house to house. Is Who checks that? Do you? Madam, uh, we rely on the, uh, these NGOs are endorsed to us with, by the uh, lawmakers. So you assume that the lawmaker would know that of the NGO's capability to do the specific project. That yes. is your assumption? Yes, ma'am. Let me ask um, Mr. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting your name. Salako, sorry. Yes. Okay. And I can't see because of the glare. Sorry about okay. that. Uh, ma'am, in, in the preliminary review, one of our requirements is to, for that proposal or the, the proponent, the NGO, to show uh, their performance of similar projects in the past three years, likewise. So you have two different standards now. Because at least you're telling me, and I would assume as a lawyer that when you look at the memorandum, there is a declaration of some kind of capacity of the yes. contracting parties, correct? It would say that uh, this agency is, is involved in this kind of uh, work and then this NGO has the capacity to fulfill this kind of, that is what an, a MOA should indicate. So, sa inyo naman po, Mr. Javiliana, there is no such. Is that correct? Mama... There are two things that I want to clarify. First, you mentioned about accreditation. Yes. We don't accredit, but we validate the documents that they are submitting to us. Then I think there's us. a problem there because from my understanding in my nine years as a senator, uh, the NGO has to be accredited. That's my understanding. Can somebody correct me? I've always assumed that I cannot just uh, uh, pull out an NGO out of the blue. That's what DBM always tells me, Mr. Relampago, Yusek Relampagos. Can you confirm that? Am I wrong? Can I invent an NGO? No, um, Madam Chair. Our guideline says that there, uh, there's a process of engaging NGOs, but uh, DBM does not uh, accredit NGOs. Yeah, well, well, the term I'm familiar with is accredited. It has to be accredited, or as you said, what do you call it? Uh, validated by the implementing agency. Is that correct? Yeah, there is because that. who else would do it? The question is directed at you, Mr. Uh, I'm not very familiar in the process, Madam Chair, on the procurement, but uh, validating with NGOs as far as implementing agencies deal with them. But what I'm citing is just uh, guidelines in the GPBB on how to engage an NGO by the national government. There are guidelines there stated, but I'm not so sure if there's a process of accreditation mentioned there. I have to check, Madam Chair. So, going back to Mr. Javiliana, you were saying, please continue. Did you finish your statement? Can you just repeat it for me? Uh, we are not accrediting the NGOs. You we said two things. Eh? That's validating. Why I... The second one is we are validating the documents that they are submitting to us the SEC registration, the permits, their work, uh, their financial documents, etc. So, so you do validate in some way because your answer it's earlier, already, it's your answer for, earlier was sorry. that you simply rely on the endorsement of a legislator. Now uh, you're saying that you do validate documents. Yes. Okay, so I, I submit, Mr. Chair, that that's something that the committee needs to look into because I'm, it's not very clear to me that this validation process looks into the actual capability, probably maybe a declaration. I don't know how far they look into this, so that's maybe something that the committee or we can ask them to give us more details so I don't use up too much of the time of the, the committee. Um, I just have um, one more question. In these cases that, in the cases we are dealing with where there are legislators who both uh, agencies have said made endorsements to you, uh, are you, I, so Mr. Havaliana, you are saying that the NGOs only dealt with you after these endorsements. In other words, you never dealt with these NGOs before these endorsements were made by certain legislators. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. So prior to that, wala kayong dealing? Wala, ma'am. 
and then sa inyo naman po sa Zetech. Wala po ma'am. So in Zerex, Zerex. So po. in other words, in in both cases, it was really the introductions of the legislators that intro, that that brought these NGOs into your areas. Well, that would seem because the, of the two letters as I mentioned earlier, the first letter is to the office of the secretary uh, from the legislator himself or his duly appointed. No, I think in the letter to the office of the secretary, it is the legislator. Then what follows is the letter to Zirek. Um, I, I say those are the two communications that will say, okay, and it identified already the non-governmental organization question is in again for both and for both um implementing agencies did did the ngos indicate that they had experience and they had been involved in similar livelihood projects and in what way were you did you verify this uh yes ma'am that's part of the validation as we have been mentioning but just uh, documentary yes documentary nothing beyond that none ma'am and and you and you don't believe it's part of your mandate to go beyond documentary um, validation. No, ma'am. We had the lean staff at that time, and we were relying on the on the endorsements of the legislators. How about you, Mr. Haviliana? Same, ma'am. We. Uh, you did not verify other than well first of they, all they was, oh, was there a because in their case there was a documentary um state statements to to the effect that they this this ngo were capable and have done similar work are you saying mega then or you have to check the records Wag naman kayo umuo lang if you're not sure Sorry. ha they they submit to us yung mga list of projects nila uh, the projects they have been involved in. Yes, that, that's your SOP? Yes, ma'am. So if we look at these documents, we will see that meron silang sinabmit talaga sa inyo. We have, uh, we have a NGO profile in the office of NAPOR. And again, you also just relied on documentary evidence? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. That's all, Mr. Chair, for now. Yes, uh, Senator Escudero. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be very brief. Um, First, um, may we ask Secretary Alcala to kindly furnish the committee, not necessarily now, sir, of all the ongoing projects that the DA and all of its attached agencies are implementing that the funding is emanating or coming from PIDAF. Dahil at least kung may ongoing pa po, baka naman may mahabol pa tayo. Um, second, again to Secretary Alcala because this is under you. Correct me if I'm wrong. Zirek is a subsidiary of NABCOR. Yes, sir. In fact, NABCOR has other subsidiaries and Zirek is only one of them. PADCC is another one, uh, Mr. Chairman. I have here Philippine Genetics Incorporated, Xerex, San Carlos Fruit Corporation, AgriLivestock Commercial Development Corporation, Inca Coffee Estate Corporation, Kaunlaran Food Corporation. Mukha po yung iba ay hindi hindi na dissolve na. But aside from Xerex, there are at least two others. Philippine Genetics. Philippine Genetics and Xerex. Mr. Now, if I may ask Mr. Bankid, what is the relationship, if any, now of NABCOR and Zirek, given that it's a subsidiary of NABCOR? What regulatory or super supervisory um, functions do you have over Zirek? Since uh, I assumed the office 2011, uh, Mr. Chair, we haven't had any of... Uh, of the reportings and all Wala that. Wala pa po. Hindi ko po po alam. Asik Salakop, given that during your time, it was still a subsidiary of NABCOR. Sir, What's we were working independently. We had no ties with uh, NABCOR. We we operated a uh, rubber plantation. Separately? Yes. Um, you said Relampago, sir. I saw your menu. Zirek and NABCOR were not one of the agencies listed, although DA was listed. 
is it legal on the part of DBM, from DBM's point of view, is it legal to download funds to NABCOR and Zirec given that it's not in the menu? Uh, you are correct, Your Honor, that the, the, the uh, only DA appears in the implementing agencies. Now, whether national government can engage uh, uh, government corporations, uh, I don't see any uh, legal impediments for uh, government corporations to be engaged in government projects. But you specifically mentioned an uh, GOCC there, NLDC. And yet, you fail to mention NABCOR or Zirec as one of the implementing offices or agencies for livelihood. Yes, Your Honor. In the preparation of this uh, menu, uh, there was no representation that this Zirec and uh, NABCOR can be direct implementers. And uh, our uh, policy is that it should be as much as possible the. Uh, the national government, the LGU, GOCC with original charge. So from your point of view, who is responsible for the funds? The agency to which you released the money to, in which case, in this case, DA? Yes, Your Honor, the implementation of the budget uh, by the recipient agency is, is accountability, Your Honor. So from your point of view, it's DA and not NABCOR or Zirec? I don't know the working relationships between the department and the GOCCs and the subsidiaries, Your Honor. It's an internal, I am aware of any internal uh, guidelines that they have to operate on in this respect, Your Honor. Uh, to Mr. Aguiliana, sir, good morning, Pa. Um, I sympathize with you if you do not recall. The best evidence would still be the documents kindly presented to us in the next hearing. But may I ask one curious question? Sino ho ba si Ms. Napoles? para i-brief nyo tungkol sa NABCOR. Um, as far as I know, her name does not appear in any of the NGOs. She is not part of any of the NGOs that made that had dealings with your office. Why go out of your way and brief her about NABCOR twice over? What's Sir, so special about her? We are looking for investors and it's not only in the police that I met. Madami pa yung investor. Uh, prospect investors uh, for might invest in NABCOR. Investors meaning bibili ng shares of stock ng NABCOR? No, sir. A joint venture with, with our projects, uh, facilities namin, sir. Hindi nyo po kilala na magkakilala, hindi nyo po alam na magkakilala si Ginang Napoles at si um, Louie? Hindi ho. Hiwalay mo silang nakausap at nakilala? Yes, sir. Walk-in ho ba si uh, Ms. Napoles o may nagpakilala sa kanya sa inyo? May nagpakilala sa akin, Sino sir. Sino po? Si Boy Harmin. Boy? Harmin. Who is that person? He's a former employee also of uh, DA. And the representation was na mag invest daw? Yes, sir. Sa inyo? Businesswoman that uh, is interested in Alcor. In the case of um, Ben Horloy, what were your talks with him about? Uh, usually... Uh, you just submit documents and deal with our uh, people uh, dealing with it. Sir, may retained, may retained earnings or monies na naiiwan sa inyo pag may in-implement na project ang PIDAF ng congressman, di po ba? Yes, sir. Magkano po yun? 3%. 3% of any monies that go to the agency is retained by um, NAPCOR? Yes, sir. On the part of Zirek, as Azek Salakop? Similarly, sir, 3%. 3% and this money is used for? Well, we, well, we've well, we transferred because there's a new management. But the visioning then before was to help support the rubber operations in Tampilisan, in Sampuanga. No, sir. Naglagay ng pondo sa inyo, you retain 3%. Yes. Supposedly, in theory, to supervise the project, right? Because what's the justification in getting a share? Yes, sir. Part of the validation and uh, administrative roles would be lifted from that. But sir, if I may direct my questions at you, under COA and GPPB rules, there are only two modes of awarding a project to an NGO. One is by public bidding, two is by negotiated procurement. According to uh, Mr. Aveliana, mere legislators' endorsement already prompted you to award the contract to a particular NGO. In your case, sir? Um, sir, we were not procuring anything. We were partnering with the non-governmental organization. Um, 
Sir, are you familiar with uh, the GPBB circular and this and the COA circular and this? Not, not really, sir. Um, in that case, how can you follow it if you're not familiar with it? Sir, the GPBB circular states, number one, you can do a project with an NGO either by bidding it out among a lot of NGOs or by negotiated procurement. But if it's a negotiated procurement, there are a lot of requirements on top of your mayor's permit, your SEC registration, your BAR financial statement. There are about 12 other items that you should have required in accordance with GPPB circular. Did you require those um, documents, sir? It begs the question because if you don't know about it, how can you require it? Yeah. Well, as I said, the, the only set of uh, validation requirements were the SEC, BIR, uh, LGU permits, uh, work uh, or project experience, and uh, the certified financial statement. Says who, sir? Who told you that those are the only requirements? It was just a policy that uh, I don't, it was inherited by Zirek. Forgive me, sir, but um, I cannot accept um, that officials would feign ignorance of an existing um, as early as June 2007. In fact, I am particularly raising this because if it's a negotiated procurement, the NGO is required to come up with a performance security or bond equivalent to the amount of the project. Para in case tumakbo, mawala, tulad ng binabanggit ho ninyo, nawala na yung NGO, hindi na malaman kung nasan, um, wala tayong habol. Again, in clear violation of existing laws and regulations, you simply awarded it to these NGOs. Now, if you're partnering with them, who introduced them to you? The legislator? Yes, sir, in the communications. And based on that endorsement, hook, line, and sinker, pasok, implement, go na. Ganun lang po yan? As I said, as we qualify them, then we enter in the, into the memorandum of agreement. Mr. Valian, in your case, same answer. No performance bond, no other requirements, as long as the legislator endorsed it, you give it to them? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Same answer. Again, under COA rules and GPPB rules, you must release only 15% initially and subsequent tranches, as mentioned by ASEC Lakop, should be released upon liquidation. May I ask, ASEC um, Salakop, niliquidate po ba yung mga naunang nirelease, sabi nyo, by tranche? Bago nyo nirelease yung mga sumunod na releases Apo. dun sa NGO? Apo. In what form did the liquidation come? Certification? Sir, with the official receipts and uh, there is also a liquidation report and of course the certification of the uh, public accountant and then you release the second tranche yes according to COA these liquidation reports are either uh, manufactured based on receipts that do not belong to them or that are not owned by them emanating from suppliers that do not exist or cannot be found no such findings on your part you just took the um, liquidation of the certified public accountant again hook line and sinker Same answer, Mr. Evaliana, sir? Yes, sir. Now, if I may ask um, Mr. Bangkit and Mr. Mali, sir, during your watch, may duman bang PDAF sa inyo para sa mga NGOs din? Mr. Bangkit? Since we assumed the officer, uh, there was uh, indicated in the minutes of the meeting, the first board meeting, that we are no longer to entertain any PDAF to any legislator, Your Honor. When did you sit? Sir, when did your term begin? Uh, 2011 for for president, uh, for being a president, but we started 20, uh, last part of 2010, being a board member. At wala kayong PDAF na hawak ng mga panahon yun? Wala na pong, wala pong pumasok na PDAF from that time on. Ini-implement na PDAF at that time? Meron, meron pong natitira na tatlo na lang po. Pero from there, hindi na po kami nag-entertain nag in any... In On the any part of Zirek, sir? Mr. Romali? Mr. Chair, I was nominated and appointed as alternate chairman and president of Zirek on January 19, 2011. During my term as president of Zirek, there was no priority development assistant fund from legislators that were transferred to Zirek by the Department of Agriculture. Hence, 
there were no PDAF releases to any non-government organization. This is in accordance with the instruction of the Secretary of the Department of Agriculture. Secretary Alcala, sir, any pending or ongoing PDAF um, allocations to be implemented by NGOs? Uh, no, what year, sir? Um, since you assumed? Um, I think... In 2010? For this to... Uh, DA, sir. At DA, I think, meron pa po. Can you give us that list, sir? Yes, sir. Um, just a few more points, Mr. Chairman. May we request the Secretary to kindly communicate with our invited guests in the future exactly what we want and need so that um, we don't waste the time of the committee with them still reviewing the documents. They very well know what we will be asking um, of them, if at all, so that they can review relevant documents. And um, one more thing, Mr. So ordered. Mr. Chairman. May we ask that ASEC Agawin also be invited? Um, she is the, I believe, incumbent treasurer of Zirek. So ordered. Alternate chair and incumbent uh, treasurer, is that correct, sir? No, Your Honor, she is our treasurer. Your treasurer. May you also invite ASEC Agawin. And one last point, Mr. Chair. Um, again, nasabi na po ito kanina ni Senator Rilon, Senate President Rilon. Ang tanging account natin na yung 82 NGOs na hindi nag-liquidate at may mga pagkukulang sa liquidation na nilagyan ng PDAF ng mga mababatas ay eh yung nababasa ho natin sa Jario. Yung walong yun ay eh base lamang sa account ng Jario at wala pa ho tayong talagang ebidensya o testimonya kung alin-alin ba doon at kung walo lang talaga doon sa 82 yung kay um, Napoles. Hence, Mr. Chair, may I suggest that when we ask for documents from these um, um, entity, uh, um, agencies, huwag nating ilimita lang dun sa walo dahil ang basihan lamang po na ay newspaper account. We don't even have the affidavit um, of the whistleblowers identifying exactly which ones are the Napoles NGOs. But that might even be irrelevant because um, based on the COA report, all 82 NGOs, whether Napoles identified NGO or not, that PDAF allocations were coursed through, did not comply with existing law, had fictitious suppliers, had bogus addresses, and um, the findings were common to all 82 um, NGOs. Thank we, you, Mr. Chair. We, we agree with uh, Senator Escudero's uh, observations, and the directives are hereby amended accordingly. Limit yourselves to the 82 uh, NGOs as uh, identified in the COA Special Audit Report. Uh, please make sure that you can... Thank you, Senator Esquidero. Please make sure that you can comply before Tuesday, next week. Kung pwede bukas, mas mabuti. We'd also like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Ralph Recto. Before we go to, to Senator Bam Aquino, uh, Asik Salakup, I have here a sample memorandum of agreement between Zarek and the Pangkabuhayan Foundation Incorporated. Um, it's signed by you. It's signed by you and for the Pangkabuhayan Foundation Incorporated, it's signed by a certain Petronila Balmaceda. Kilala po ninyo ito? Hindi po. So lahat ng mga nagpipirma ng mga memorandum of agreement ninyo, hindi humaharap sa inyo? Ganun po ba yun? Hindi po. Um, as I said, the, some of, I understand, I checked with some of the staff, there were people who visited the office who just carried the document. Sino itong people who visited the office? Sir, I, I don't know. They, uh, I'm, not, I'm not aware of who they are. Maybe who would be in a position? Your, staff, yung, yung in-identify mo kanina. Yes, the project coordinator. Uh, uh, uh. In your case, Mr. Haviliana, ganun din? Hindi humaharap sa'yo yung mga uh, NGOs? Uh, sorry. For that particular NGOs that Ben Hor is handling, he's the one carrying the papers. He's the one carrying. Yes. Uh -huh. How about the others? Uh... They go to the office and uh, submit the documents for us. To you? Yes. No. Uh, to the regular channels. How come How come all the other NGOs submit their papers to your staff, but the NGOs handled by Ben Louie, you handle them personally? No, no. 
Eh, kakasabi mo lang, humaharap sa'yo, nagpa-follow up sa'yo. Not through me, through our office. Eh, humaharap sa'yo. Sabi mo kanina, si Mr. Benloy. Ang uh, sinabi ko kanina, sir, I met him sa office, and yung regular transaction is not, I'm not the one handling. Pumunta sa mga staff namin. You met him? What yes, is the sir. circumstances of your meeting with him? Uh, Who introduced him to you? Napakilala doon sa opisina, sir. Pumasok lang, walang kasama. Kasama yung uh, endorsement letter from the from the lawmakers. Sinong lawmaker? Usually, kung sino yung... Sinong lawmaker? You, you cannot say that you don't remember. You distinctly remember meeting him and now may kasamang dokumento. Uh, may, may, alam na, naalala mo yung mga, dok, yung mga detalye, yet yung detalye, sinong legislator? Sabihin mo na, sino? Sir, madami yung lawmakers involved. Sino? Kung madami, that's what we're here for. We're here to listen. Kung gusto mo ang kalas 4, makikinig kami. Sino? Sir, uh, I think earlier we agreed that he will provide us with the documents and uh, with yes. the list of... Uh, yes, yes, but I don't find it... I'm very uncomfortable that you remember a lot of details Pati yung kape, yung pinakain, tinanong kita kung anong pinakain sa inyo is uh, Janet Lim na po, eh, sabi mo, kape lang. So yung mga detalye yan, naalala mo. Pero yung mga pangalan ng legislators, hindi mo maalala. Selective memory yata nangyayari dito. Hindi naman, sir. Mr. Haviliana. Yes, sir. Naalala mo may dalang dokumento si Ben Loy. Endorsing. A legislator endorsing the letter. Sino? Marami nga. Okay, give me one. Para hindi mo na masabing ano, selective. Oh, I mentioned earlier, Australia. Sino pa? You are looking to your left. Why? Why are you looking to your left? I'm looking for some documents. Can, can I call on uh, the head of finance, a former finance? Of yes. Sino? Nandito ba? Yes, sir. Sino nandito? Ang pangalan niya, please. Uh, Roda Mendoza. Miss Mendoza, are you around? Comsec, please administ please state your name muna, ma'am. I am Rodora Mendoza, sir. Rodora? Mendoza. Uh, member of the Department of Agriculture? No, I was with National Agribusiness Corporation. Ah, with NAPCOR. Yes, sir. Uh, where are you presently employed now? I am employed with the EVD Philippines. With the? EVD Philippines. Private? Yeah. Okay. Comsec, please administer. Kindly stand, Ms. Mendoza, and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Mendoza. Uh, in what capacity were you at NABCOR? I used to be the Vice President for Admin and Finance. Okay. Ma'am, you're under oath? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you know Mr. Ben Loy? Yes, sir. Do you know Miss Janet Lim Napoles? Um, I was familiar with her name. Yes, sir. Familiar with her name, so you've never met her? I met her once. Where? I was invited in the Thanksgiving Mass in Discovery Suites by Ben Horloy. What was the Thanksgiving Mass all about? Why was it Thanksgiving? I do not know exactly. It's just a Thanksgiving Mass. Okay. Okay. What were the circumstances then when you met her? Who, Janet? Yes. Only during the Thanksgiving Mass. Sinong nagpakilala sa'yo? It was Ben Horloy. Okay. So, sa mga tuwid, uh, ma'am, um, Ms. Mendoza, si Ben Horloy frequented your office sa NABCOR. Yes. Ah, okay. Now, he followed up on certain NGOs.
projects. Am yes. I correct? Specifically for social development, SD. Yeah. Ito nandito. SD. The SD, social, SD P -F -F -I. Okay. Because he was the president then of that NGO. Do you recall, ma'am, about anyone else, any other NGO aside from SDP FFI? That, um, that Mr. Negotiate, Lui, yeah. Yes, followed up. Um, there were only three NGOs that, um, as you mentioned in the yes, NGOs, Alin po ito, SDP FFI, and, 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 and um, Manfi, Social, no, Social Development, and the POPDF, or the People's Organization, for progress and development. Okay, something. thank you, thank you. So, Ben Loy uh, frequented your office and uh, pinapalo up po yung mga project nito, mga NGO. Only for SD. Yeah, for the three that you mentioned. Only for the on, only for one. Ah, uh, for one. Because of the social development, he is the. Okay, okay, sige ma'am. Ngayon, yung yung mga project na yon. Sino po yung mga legislator na nag-endorse doon um, sa projects I, na yun? I am very sure of the three senators, Revilla, Estrada, and Enrile. You are, ma'am, let me state it again. You are very sure of the three senators, Revilla, Estrada, Estrada and Enrile. Enrile. So, for, oh, paki, sige ma'am, please, go ahead. But for the congressmen, um, Australia is one. Um, there are other congressmen um, who endorse. Do you um, remember them, ma'am? I have the matrix. If yes, ma'am, please get if, your matrix. Uh, I I need an internet. <laughs> Sorry. Internet. Yeah, Bakit? because I I emailed that before to the. Um, okay. Could you bring it next time, please? Surely. Okay. Oh, ngayon na yes, tayo. <laughs> Ang daming biglang nagsabi sa akin. Uy, ngayon na, ngayon na. May internet ba tayo? Okay. May laptop ka ba, Miss Mendoza? None. Can somebody please provide a laptop para pwede mag-internet? Sorry, sorry. Habang, sige ma'am, Miss Mendoza, habang tinitignan mo, ka, uh, take a look at it muna. Once you're ready, tell us. In the meantime, Senator Bam wishes to ask some questions. Senator Bam Aquino, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to uh, ask our former heads of uh, ZREC and uh, NAB Corno. Nung lumabas po yung balita na uh, may scam, my ghost projects, and these are groups which you were involved with, no? your agency was involved with. Ano po yung naging reaction ninyo? And secondly, do you concur with COA that indeed these NGOs are indeed fake and indeed meron lang na walang pera uh, dun sa mga agencies ninyo through these organizations? Maybe Mr. Salakot can start. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, when, we, when news broke out, uh, well, I, I don't have the records anymore, so I had to discuss the matter with the current president, uh, Asa Kumali, and we just had the conclusion that, hey, let's review our documents to this. Oh, you, you do concur with COA that indeed these are fake NGOs? Sir, based on the submissions and the liquidations and the uh, testing of the certified public accountant, and as attested to by the legislator, uh, it didn't cross my mind that uh, these NGOs were fake. Hindi, oh, ngayon po. Kasi this is, uh, you're talking about 2007 to 2009. Yes. No? And I'm, I'm taking your word for it that as the liquidations came in, as the paperwork came in, sabi ho ninyo, tingin nyo walang, yes. walang mali. No? Pero si COA, naglabas na po ng special audit, nagkaroon ng uh, news reports. Uh, these institutions that you parted with are actually, in the last week, were presented to be fake. No? Uh, very specific po yung COA report. Hanggang dun sa may sprayer ba o wala, may seeds ba o wala, and mukhang wala talaga, no? So now that the COA report is here, do you agree, do you concur that indeed these NGOs were fake at naloko kayo back in 2007? 
Sir, I still rely on what were submitted to us. And as I conferred with the current president, uh, I understand based on the COA findings, uh, Zirek at present has to file cases with, the, with those NGOs. So indeed, if you want to file cases against them, then you do concur that indeed, peke nga sila. Well, if that's the direction of the COA findings, and the current management of Zirek will have to concur with the with the directions that COA is leading to. Okay. So here, now you are stating that back in 2007, sa tingin mo, walang nangyaring masama, but ngayon, because of the special audit, you're now second-guessing uh, what happened in the past, and now you are concurring with the um, with ASEC Omali that you should file cases against these NGOs. I believe so, sir. Okay. And I ask Mr. Havellana, kayo po, sir, kasi you you unlike uh, Mr. Salakop, you in you you met with uh, Ben Herloy, no? Na meet you pa po, and he was a frequent visitor at uh, Nabcor. Nung nalaman ho ninyo na peke nga ang mga NGO na to, ano yung naging reaction ninyo? And do you concur that indeed uh, your office went into deals with these NGOs which now we consider to be fake? First, uh, sir, I was really shocked and surprised finding all these things in the newspaper na fake yung mga dokumento. But to our best abil of our ability, we have reviewed all the SEC registration and we find it nothing wrong with their SEC registration. Oh, that's, there is a uh, NGO registered to that name. Uh, to the receipts that were given to us, yun, siguro sa uh, na loko rin kami na uh, Okay, so you agree na naloko nga ang uh, NABCOR? If it is really fake, then talaga naloko kami. Okay, so at this point, you do concur na fake nga po yun. Ano yung pakiramdam ninyo that you had met with Ben Horloy, he frequented your office, I'm sure nakipag-checkahan siya sa mga kasama ninyo, and now you find out that he is a whistleblower, that he himself is saying that his institutions are fake. Meron po ba kayong pagsisisi? O meron po ba kayong naiisip na dapat ginawa nyo instead of uh, what transpired? Uh, when we, we heard about this, sir, I really uh, was shocked and, uh, that all of these things, uh, NABCOR and myself are involved in these things. And uh, during that time, uh, during that time, sir, we were trying our best, no malice at all giving it to them, the, uh, well, going into partnership with them. Okay, Mr. Abellano, I'm not, um, hindi ko naman kung sinasabi na guilty kayo, no? This is not the, this is not the forum for that, no? Pero ngayon, uh, sabi nga ko ninyo, you agree na naloko nga kayo. Tama uh, ho, di ba? Sabi ko kung totoo yun ang sinabi ng COA, in which I, we have also to validate all these things, yung mga receipts, etc., eh, but my question is, do you concur with COA that these are fake? So, kasi o, ano o, no? Uh, lumabas na to months ago. So I'm sure you had time to look back. Uh, do you concur with COA that these institutions, especially the ones that uh, Ben Hurloy, yung nilapit pa niya mismo sa inyong institutions, that they are fake? He himself says that they are fake. So you concur that it is fake, no? Uh... Siguro, in matter, matter of definition is really, uh, is that on our part, meron, meron silang, they are registered uh, with us. Oh, SEC, there's no so. question that they are registered. No? Uh -huh. uh, in fact, it's, it's been taken up here already that there is, they have SEC, they have BIR, they have all of the necessary documents. But in terms of the actual work, uh -huh. kahit si Ben Herloy, am I right, diba? Kahit si Ben Herloy, inaamin niya na peke nga yung NGO niya mismo. Uh -huh. And COA, in her the, the, the chairperson was here last week and they validated the uh, NGOs and they indeed uh, concur that they are all fake, no? So ngayon ho, I'm, I'm asking you, ngayon ho na lumalabas nga na peke, ano sa tingin ninyo yung dapat ginawa ninyo para hindi nga nangyari itong itong scandal na ito? I, I, and I'll ask uh, Mr. Uh, Asik Doy the same thing, ano? Kung meron ho kayong dapat ginawa, what should it have been to have prevented all of these hundreds of millions of pesos to be lost to corruption? Uh, we could have done better. 
uh, validating all these things and doing due diligence on all these documents. So you're saying oh, na ngayon nga po na lumabas na peke nga ang mga proyektong ito, uh, unfortunately, your institutions went into deals with fake NGOs, no? and in fact, ghost projects. Mm -hmm. You're saying po ngayon, if you could turn back time, you would have opted to validate the projects yourself. That NAPCOR should have validated the projects themselves. Yes, sir. Do you agree, uh, Asik Doy? Yes, sir. Similarly, uh, more intense and dissecting uh, validation should okay. be done. Okay. Um, Director Susan, in COA's um, estimation, because there's been a lot of talk about who should validate, no? And in fact, um, yung sinasabi ko kasi kanina ni uh, uh, Asik Salaku about validation, that's paper validation, no? You, you basically check their papers, no? But as we know now, maraming papeles, kahit pa papeles, wala naman talagang ginagawang serbisyo o wala talagang proyekto. In COA's estimation, who should validate the projects that government agencies uh, go into? Is it the legislator who uh, endorsed the project? Is it the implementing agency who is uh, in direct partnership with the NGOs? Is it the mother agency who is, uh, in effect, um, the umbrella agency of the smaller agencies? Is it COA, the resident COA of the agencies? Sino po? Alaska, DBM also, no, Yusek Relampag was the same question. Sino po sa tingin ninyo yung responsable sa pag-validate ng mga proyektong ito? Uh, depende po yun sa MOA that they have entered into. Kung, kung kasama po yung legislator and then meron siyang function na nakalagay doon, so depende po yun sa kanilang nakalagay. But definitely, ang implementing agency po dapat nag-validate. And in this case, the implementing agencies are the subsidiaries or the mother agency? Uh, yung subsidiaries po, the one who implemented the project, yun po siguro ang talagang dapat nag-validate, but then siguro yung DA should have monitored. Uh, uh, Yusek Relampagos, DBM? Sino po? Kasi may nagsasabi rin, dapat yung DBM yung nagmo-monitor ng uh, mga proyekto. Your Honor, I concur with the statement of the representative from COA that the direct implementing agency should be able to do that kind of validation before entering as part of due diligence. And do you agree, Yusek Relampagos, that paper validation is not enough? Especially, well, firstly, when we're talking about hundreds of millions of pesos, and secondly, considering that there is a 3% given to the agency specifically for monitoring. Yes, Your Honor, because if we go by, go, by, go by the guidelines of GPVB and even the COA guidelines, these NGOs should be posting some performance bonds or security bonds. So as part of due diligence, all of this should be done. So in short, you're saying that the implementing agencies meron talagang failure in terms of the validation process, number one. Number two, in terms of following the proper procedures already laid out in the law. Do you, do, is that what is that what you're saying, you said? Perhaps there were uh, oversights, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, may I ask uh, Asik Salakop? I'll be short talang to, Mr. Chairman. Marami hong pera pumasok sa, sa inyong uh, organization, no, sa ZREC. Um, from 2007 to 2009, you can just give a ballpark figure. Magkano po yung PDAF na pumasok sa, sa ZREC? I'll be asking Mr. Havellana the same question. Sir, uh, ballpark figure around 240 million. Oh, five legislators. And of the 240 million, how much is in question right now? Or how much was um, pointed out by COA to be irregular or illegal? Sir, based on the uh, COA report, all of that. 100%? Yes. But one of them is only uh, being related to the Napolis group. Okay. Uh, Mr. Havellana? Magkano po yung pumasok nung panahon ninyo as uh, president ng NABCOR na PIDAF? Based on the COA report uh, submitted, uh, I think it's 1.2 billion. 1.2 billion? Yes, sir. Magkano po dun sa 1.2 billion ang irregular or illegal uh, based on the on your own reports or based on COA reports?
Well, roughly it's around uh, four to five hundred million. Out of? Of the 1.2. Anong porsyento yan? Uh, 30%, 33%, no? 400 out of 1.2. Uh, yeah, 33%. So 100% irregular for ZREC and 33% irregular for NABCOR. Okay. Siguro, last question, no? Uh, so what have we found out? First of all, that there was failure in terms of the agencies, in terms of validation. Secondly, siguro, moving forward, uh, for DBM and COA, paper validation is not enough, obviously. Kailangan talagang tingnan yung mga agencies, especially when we're talking about huge amounts of money, and especially that there is a 3% to the agency. Kaya wala pong excuse kasi. May pera ho na binigay sa inyo para mag-monitor. Ano ba naman yung isang staff ninyo pumunta mismo dun sa implementation date, no? That's not going to cost a million pesos. That's a few thousand pesos. And if indeed you did do that, eh di wala tayong skandalo ngayon, ano? Secondly, um, what percentage? This was also my question to Chairman Grace last time. She said 80% yung irregular or illegal because we're not just talking about the irregularity here, no? Most of us have actually said that we want to abolish the PDAF. And more and more, as we go on with the hearings, the numbers show that the majority of, of, of the money going to you is going to, going to waste. No? Si Chairman Gray said 80%, ngayon 100%, ngayon 33%. It puts the whole system into question. Maybe as a final question, I'd like to ask our two former heads. No? Ang pakip kasi, ho, marami yung nakatingin ho sa atin. No? especially the ones who are involved. Dalawa lang po kasi nakikita kong pwedeng reaksyon, no? Either kasama ka o naloko ka. ba? Either kasama ka, you are complicit, and probably that's what most people are thinking, even the legislators who are involved, or kasama ka sa mga naloko. Naloko ka. And indeed, you feel very bad, as many of us feel bad, that so much money was lost to corruption. Doon sa report po ng COA, 6 billion yung nawala. No? Let me, we're going undergoing the budget season now. Ang DOT budget is about 2.4 billion. Ang DTI budget is about 3.1 billion. Pag i-add nyo ho yun, mas maliit pa rin yun doon sa perang nawala o sa perang irregular. Two large agencies' budgets, 2.4 and 3.1, that's 5.5 billion, is still less than the amount identified by COA, which is now irregular or illegal. Right, ma'am, no? So, ganun ho kalaking pera yung nawala sa atin. Ang pakiramdam rin ho ba ninyo, kasi I, I'm not getting that from you right now eh. Ang pakiramdam ho rin ba ninyo ay naloko that this should be stopped and in fact, under your watch, naloko rin kayo ng mga peking NGO. Yan ho ba yung pakiramdam ninyo, uh, Asik uh, Salakop and Mr. Javeliana? Sir, yes. Uh, naloko po. Kung Mr. Javeliana? Yes, sir. I feel uh, naloko rin kami, sir. Naloko na. Okay. <laughs> Miss Mendoza, are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Please read your uh, list, your matrix. Yes, um, for the Social Development Foundation, Congressman Conrado Estrella III. Congressman Erwin Chongbian. Congressman Rodolfo Plaza. Congressman Victor Ortega. Congressman Samuel Dangwa of the Lone District of Benguet. Congressman Valdez, Edgardo Valdez. Congressman Mark Douglas Cagas. Congressman Rodolfo Plaza. Did I mention Congressman Irvin Chongbian a while ago? Yes, you did. Yeah. Senator Chingoy Estrada. Congresswoman Rizalina Lanete. Congressman Arthur Pingoy, Jr. of the 2nd District of South Cotabato. Senator Juan Ponce Enrile. Um. 
that's for the social development. Okay, that's for the SDPFFI NGO. Go ahead, please. For the Masaganang Ani para sa Magsasaka Foundation, I have here Senator Ramon Bong Revilla. Senator Jingoy Estrada. Congresswoman Rizalina Lanete. Congressman Rodolfo Valencia. Senator Juan Ponce Enrile. That's all. And okay, for the, for the People's P -O -P Organization, I, am. Okay, go I, ahead. I only have one for Senator Enrile. That's all, sir. Just Senator Enrile? Yes, sir. Okay. Ma'am, in the course of your dealing with Ben Loy and dealing with these three NGOs and, this, and these projects, uh, did any legislators show up or talk to you? None so far. Did any of the representatives of the legislators um, show up or talk to you? No, sir. Okay. In the course of your conversations with Ben Loy, what do you recall? What he told you of your own personal knowledge? Well, for one, because we are, um, we comply with the COA circular, the uh, documentary requirements, so I... I used to ask from him the the compliance to that um, COA circular or the documentary requirements. That includes the SAC or the CDA if it happens to be. It's not a cooperative yes. that's why I'm asking for the SAC then. The certified true copy of the articles of incorporation and bylaws. The three years financial statements, the disclosure statements that none of its incorporators are with the government or connected with the go any other government offices. Their track records that they have implemented the same projects with other um, agencies like the TRC, NLDC, ZIRECT. Um, did I mention TRC? <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Yeah. So, so, yeah, pero, so those are just regular... Yes, sir. Uh, no, but nothing unusual. Nothing. Mga dispinag-usapan nyo. And did you notice anything uh, in the course of these three years na kaduda-duda, o may kutub ka, Wala may nakita naman. ka? Wala naman. None, sir. Kasi they are complying naman so far. And um, whenever they liquidate, they have this um, external auditor's report that... Um, fair and um, fair and uh, true naman yung nire-report nila as part of the liquidations. So. Yung external auditor po, yun yung pirmado ng CPA, no? Private. Nila. Yes, sir. Pero sino pumipili ng CPA? They are the ones because it's, it's their CPA. Their and, yeah. Ah, I see. So, that's about it, no? Just the CPA is the one that certifies. Yes, sir. And also certified correct by the legislators themselves. Ah, certified correct by the legislators. Because they have the list of beneficiaries that they have, the legislators affix their signature in, this, in the list of the beneficiaries. Sandali, sandali, Ma'am Rodora. You mean they submit a list of beneficiaries and the legislator signs that list of beneficiaries, yes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's part and of so the all these people that you mentioned, these legislators that you mentioned, have liquidation reports and they sign it. Yes, sir. It's attached to the liquidation report um, submitted by the NGOs. Po. Okay. This is full with regards to NABCOR, no? Yes, sir. Mr. Banigid, please submit all documents. Again, I'd like to reiterate, no? The, the directive is to comply with all the 82 uh, NGOs listed in the COA Special Audit Report. Uh, not just these eight anymore, or these three, but all 82. So, in the next meeting, Mr. Baniget, uh, maybe we can, you can present this, um, this list of beneficiaries that have been 
signed by the uh, legislators. Yes, sir. No. Uh, in particular, we'd like to see that. That's that, that's very interesting because uh, it's signed by the legislators and the beneficiaries are stated there. Verbal yes, response, please. Yes, Your Honor. We'll do. Senate President? Yeah, just to clarify, you're saying each trans was liquidated, that was liquidated, was signed by the legislator? Yes, sir. There is the certificate of acceptance. So if there were four trances, the legislator signed four times? Yeah. So, the legislator signed four times. I, uh, yeah, that's what I can remember. Yes, yes okay. Excuse me. So are are you sure it was the legislator and not the legislator's representative? Um, sir, I am... Um, well, yeah, but there are... Oh, no. what, few what do you mean by well, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir. Go ahead. I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> Sorry. Um, most of the legislators, they sign themselves. Um, but for the few um, legislators, they have um, assigned somebody from their office. Okay. And you're familiar with the signature of these legislators? Kasi hindi naman sila pupunta sa opisina ninyo, di ba? It is consistently signed... I, they have the same signature in all the documents. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We'd like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Ralph Recto. Next on the list is um, Senator Nancy Binay. Ma'am. Uh, maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Um, kay um, Secretary Alcala po, sa DA po ba ay may accreditation process na nagaganap for NGOs? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, kaya po, dun sa uh, two years and one month na hindi po uh, kami nandaanan na feed up buhat noong July 1st of 2010 hanggang August of 2012, uh, nung pumayag na po kami daanan na feed up, kami po yung nagpa-initiate talaga na yung pong pre-accreditation. Pero yung pong accreditation namin, eh, talagang personal pong pinupuntahan. Eh, may committee po na nag-accredit. And then, uh, I, 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 hindi ko rin po alam na nagagawa pala ni, nila before yung by tranches but uh, siniguro po namin na by tranches po yung i-receive at every time na meron pong uh, ipinasok na liquidation meron pong isang special committee na bumababa sa field at uh, binabalidate So, um, Secretary bali ho lumalabas before your time wala hong accreditation process Hindi ko po sigurado, uh, uh, Madam Senator, uh, wala, wala po akong personal na knowledge doon. Uh, pero Sorry hindi po kayo nagtanong um, kung during nung time ko nung dating secretary kung meron mong proseso or... Uh, uh, hindi ko po ma... Ano, basta po nung sabihin po sa amin na hindi kami pwedeng basta tumanggi, ay nag-isip po kami ng paraan para may safety nets po kami may put up. Um, tapos sa kaya meron ho ba kayong uh, parang master list kung sino ho yung mga accredited um, NGOs? Or kung hindi man sila accredited that um, DA has dealt with in the past? Uh, kung yung po nakaraan, eh, ipa, ipahanap po namin at uh, isasubmit po namin na uh, uh, Madam Senator. Apo. Pero yung sa kasalukuyan po, meron po kaming No sa sinasabi ko mong buhat, August of uh, 2012, pero po kami na accredited na 26 NGOs. Sandali, so, excuse me, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Secretary Alcala, I've been informed by the stenographers that if you could speak louder, please, uh, they cannot follow your... Closer to the mic, please. Se uh, Senator Binay. So may okay. existing one na 26 NGOs? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Sige po, um, Mr. Chair, um, I would just like to request for that list of... Um, NGOs accre um, accredited or used to um, have parang uh, work with DA from 2004 up to the present. So ordered, Secretary Alcala, will you comply? Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you. Tapos kay um, Yusek Relampagos naman po, pwede mo bang um, 
explain niyo ho sa amin in detail kung paano ho yung proseso ng pagre-release ng pondo ng PDAF. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, may I request for the PowerPoint presentation of the flow? So, uh, j just the flow. Can we go to the directly to the fourth chart? Uh, by the way, we're starting with the special provisions because that is the general... Uh, yeah, okay. So uh, the... Uh, yes, yeah. um, kasi naka-stay to ata, I think it's from 2007 and 2009. Do I assume that um, after 2009, you already changed the process? Uh, the special provisions were uh, strengthened and tightened, so the process may differ just a little bit. Thank but you. for 2007-2009, these are the special provisions governing the release of the funds. So, as uh, stated there, that the fund should be used to fund priority programs and projects under the, the so-called 10-point legacy agenda at that time, and the fund shall be released directly to the implementing agencies as indicated in the PDAF menu. And implementing agencies should adhere to the guidelines as far as procurement of common use supply. So here, in these guidelines, we are not speaking of any cap or amounts that were uh, allocated to any legislator. There's no cap here. And uh, also, we would like really to emphasize that the release is really for directly to the implementing agencies only so if we go to the next uh, slide uh, the, f there are the first box here referred to the endorsement by legislators of programs and projects that should be consistent with the PDAF menu can you can, can, can we is that readable to everyone can you click that one okay so and then the second is the chairman of appropriations committee uh, or the Speaker of the House and Senate Finance Committee Chair and the Senate President endorse these uh, identified programs and projects uh, of the legislator to DBM. And then the third step would be uh, the Office of the Secretary of DBM receives this listing and gives instructions to the Bureau Constraint to process the release. Uh, um, yeah. If I may uh, interrupt. Were there instances that DBM can um, decline the request of a legislator? Uh, we cannot uh, because uh, these are uh, endorsed by chairman of the by both houses. However, if there are in a, uh, the requirements are not complied with, there's a time we will refer it to them. Now, uh, as far as I know, my personal knowledge, I do not know if the secretary at that time return any uh, request of legislator. Um, for instance, uh, objecting to this uh, statement. Uh, uh, sandali, sandali, sandali. <laughs> Very strong. <laughs> okay. Uh, Senator Pia, please. Oh, Senator Ma'am Cynthia, you go ahead, please. Uh, we, uh, being former legislators before this, we disagree with that because I remember in Congress, if we make a recommendation and they don't agree, they return it to us and we are asked to revise it. May menu eh. Pag wala ka sa menu, hindi pwede yon. Ibabalik nila. Misan nga, balik nga ng balik. Katakot-takot na balik ang bumabalik sa amin. Kaya hindi, hindi absolute say ang legislator dyan. O, Secretary Rampagos? Uh, As stated there, the listing should be consistent with the menu so that if it arrives to us and it's not consistent with the you know, we cannot release it because like then, as kanina sinabi mo you cannot ano eh, wala I mean, discretion eh ngayon ano so okay, claro yeah. pagka okay, hindi akma sa si menu binabalik yes your honor okay. that the list of uh, requirements are there okay so i'm sorry just to be precise yes, it should yes. conform with the menu and if that list does not conform we have to return or inform the okay. House Constraint. Senator Binay? Yes, uh, Senator Villar. In fact, they interpret the menu. Hindi kami. Kahit we, do, we uh, disagree with how they interpret the menu, they are the ones followed, not us. In oh, our oh. experience in Congress. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Binay? Um, 
bis uh, in fact oh, user kaya lang pagkos di ba may mga instances nga ho na hindi naririlisan ng PDAF lalong lalo na yung mga hindi kakampe ng kung sino man yung incumbent na presidente is this not true I don't have really knowledge of that because I don't make such decision uh, all the things that I'm I'm required to sign I sign but whether finally they are released I don't have personal knowledge madam chair uh, madam senator uh, Sandale, Senator Pia wants to make a comment. Senator Pia. Indulgence of uh, Senator Binay. Thank you. What? Since when have you been USEC in DBM? Uh, I was promoted to USEC in year 2000. Year 2000, Your Honor. So you were in DBM when uh, Secretary Andaya... You're, that's right, Your Honor. And you don't read the newspapers? He said, he said in no uncertain terms in the newspapers that many times legislators were not released, their PDAF was not released. You're not aware of that? There was that statement, but they could not uh, locate, I mean, have personal knowledge who the, they were. No, but what was the question? Is it not that legislators were not, some legislators did not receive their PDAF? if they were not aligned with the president. It's so clear. It's so black and white. So let's just call a spade a spade because otherwise I will also call you a liar. No, I don't know exactly because what I was, was the I, reason. Because I and many other senators and I think members of Congress went through that. So if people like you and DBM will not acknowledge that that happened, then we are wasting our time. That is a fact. PDAF was not released on the discretion of DBM perhaps, or as we all know, upon the instruction also of uh, then-President GMA. So we know that. Come on. Otherwise, you're lying to us and you're wasting our time. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just to, on this, on the same issue. Okay, Senator Rector. Para magkaintindihan tayo, maraming vetting process. When the legislator requests for a project, it first goes to the chairman of the committee. There is a vetting process there, as you mentioned earlier. Then it goes to the Senate President or the Speaker, as the case may be. That is the first vetting process. Then that goes to the DBM. The DBM looks at the documents again. That is another vetting process. Then the Secretary brings that to the Office of the President. That is another vetting process. Then the President says whether or not we should release this. Then that goes back to the DBM. That is that the that is not part of the flowchart as I see it right now. Tama yung flowchart yung sa legislator goes to the committee chairman, to the Senate president, or the speaker, as the case may be. Then it goes to the DBM. There is a vetting process. Then, dito sa flowchart, wala na yung office of the president. And that's why later on in my questions, I will also zero in on part of that. Halimbawa, in the COA report, the budget in the GAA for 2007 to nine roughly was only 80 billion. Paano naka-release ng 115? Yan ang mga tatanungin ko po mamaya. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Rector. Senator Villar? Uh, I just want to make a manifestation with regards to what uh, Senator Pia said. It is my own personal experience after the 2005 impeachment that I did not receive my PIDA for, I think, a year and a year and a half. Oo. Uh, dahil bumoto ako for the impeachment of President GMA. That's uh, true. That's my own experience. So it's not true that uh, we have a say in our PIDAF. Uh, we are uh, just uh, 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 under the, it's the influence of DBM who will decide whether you will receive your PIDAF or not. Okay. Uh, you Secretary Lampagos? Yes. Can I continue the presentation or? Or would you want rather respond because? Uh, well, Your uh, Honor, I, I uh, that issue of uh, bringing the PDAF to the office of the president or exactly denying it, I don't have the personal knowledge that I saw my secretary do, doing that. I mean, I didn't have that personal knowledge. If it really happened, then. Senator Dillon. Uh, just on that uh, point that you're saying that, you know, uh, you, you're saying in effect that if it is in accordance with the menu, you release it. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Yeah. In 2005, 
I submitted request in accordance with the menu. Wala namang, it, I was deprived. I was, I was, the, the, the releases were not allowed. 2006, the same. 2007, the same. My point is, it is the president's power not to release. Is that correct? Believe, That's under the Constitution. I believe so, Your Honor, that he has the, so he's, you, he's implementing the budget. So you do not have to say that uh, everything is released, because it is within the power of the President not to release a single peso from the budget, because that is the prerogative of the Chief Executive. We have the power to authorize the expense or the use of public funds as members of as Congress, but the President in a uh, in the in our system of government, while there is that authority, can choose not to exercise that authority. There is authority in the PDAF, but the president need not exercise uh, can exercise the authority not to release, or that's called impounding. And there's nothing wrong with that. Is that correct, Mr. Lapugos? I fully agree with that statement, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, just one follow-up question. Sorry, Senator but just Pia, one. Yes. Because it, it is consistent with the line of questioning. Um, Yusek, uh, if um, the uh, the request is not in the menu, is does DBM have the power to recommend a different kind of uh, request so that it could be approved? No, Your Honor, we return it to the House. Or then the that Senate. is also a lie because I also know that DBM and you yourself has gives recommendations either verbally or through a representative on what other courses of action should be taken so that Marili Shung funds. It has not happened to me, but that is the report that I received because like the Senate President, hindi rin ako narilisan ng pondo paggalit ng Presidente, the past President. If we did that, Your Honor, we're just advising on how to comply with the menu, not really entirely replacing it outside of the menu. Okay, uh, I believe Senator Binay was requiring you to make a presentation. Uh, please continue. Ah, uh, isa na lang din. Ha? Kung hindi ho kayo aware, will the secretary be the best person to ask kung talaga bang hindi sila nare-release ng pondo because of political realities? Uh, in that reason, for that reason, Your Honor, I don't have a personal knowledge why certain uh, legislators did not receive their uh, allocation here. Yeah, but do you think um, si Secretario is a better person to ask the answer that question? I suppose so, Your Honor, because he makes the final decision on this. Okay. Continue with your... Um... Yeah. Uh, well, this is a general flow of papers. There might be exceptions, as pointed out. So once we... The Office of the Secretary instructs the Concerned Bureau to release this, the Bureau uh, will check compliance with the requirements. And as stated earlier, if the requirements are not complied with, we defer processing and inform the appropriations or finance committees of both houses of the deficiencies. And then if requirements, however, are complied with, we process the release documents as uh, follows. We really release the SARO or the Special Allotment Release Order and after the SARO have been approved, we will release the notice of cash allocation. Uh, Yusha, can you please um, enumerate the requirements required? Uh, there is chart, uh, the requirements there. Can you check, click, click that one? We have list of programs and projects of legislators with identified agency and the corresponding amount and endorsement letter from the Appropriations Committee in the case of the House of Reps or for the Finance Committee in the case of the Senate. Yes, Your Honor. Please go ahead. Okay. Your so once we have uh, prepared the SARO and or the NSA, we will uh, give this to the Office of the Secretary or the Office of the Undersecretary for consideration and signature approval. The same documents will be returned to the Bureau Concerned which will be, uh, which will record and reproduce copies of these documents and forward the same to the office of the secretary. The office of the secretary of DBM will furnish the legislators of both houses copies of approved release documents. 
and then uh, this uh, will be forwarded to the Bureau of Technical Service of DBM for them to release the original copy to the implementing agency, forwards other copies to concerned bureau, to DBM ROs if needed, and to the Commission on Audit. In the case of NCA, the Bureau of Technical Service gives or deposits the same to the Authorized Government Servicing Bank and release original copies of the advice of NCA issued to the implementing agency. So the releases uh, are done as follows. The original copy of the SARO to the implementing agency and the uh, copies of the SARO to the Bureau and for the regional office and to the commission on audit and gives or deposits the NCA to the authorized government servicing banks and release also the advice of NCA issued to the implementing agency. However, if the implementing agency is, an L is a local government unit, our Bureau of Technical Service will forward a copy of the advice of NCA issued or that's the guide to the concerned DBM regional office and upon receipt uh, by the regional office of the SARO and the ANCAI, it will process the funding checks for deposit to the authorized government servicing bank of the LGU for the credit of the amount to the account of the LGU. So this is the general process that we follow, Madam Chair. Um, so, wala pong pondo na nare-release dun sa legislator? Yes, no, Your Honor, because uh, we only release to implementing agencies. And when we release to implementing agencies, we make sure that there is the fund code and agency code. If there is no such, we cannot release. Go ahead with your... That's the end of the general flow of PDAF in 2007-2009. So, pag na-deliver na ho yung, pag na-implement na yung project, wala ho kayong ad additional documentation um, required from the implementing agency? Uh, again, Your Honor, please. Um, so, pag na-implement na ho yung project, don't you require the implementing agency to um, submit um, other documents? There's no specific uh, requirements that the agencies will submit a particular report on the implementation of a certain project of the legislature. Because in that particular phase of the transaction, the liquidation, uh, etc., is now post audit, and the jurisdiction is now with the COA, no longer with the DBM. Is that correct? That's right, Your Honor. That's why no documents are submitted to you. Uh, it's only the COA who will now be responsible for uh, auditing and and approving the liquidation, not DBM. That's correct, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, Ms. Roda Mendoza, yes, yes, um, you said that Mr. Ben Lui introduced you to Ms. Janet Lim Napoles during the Thanksgiving dinner. Tama po ba? Yes, sir. Okay. How did he introduce uh, Ms. Lapolis? To you, to you as, how did he introduce her as her boss, as his boss? Yes, sir. Ah, so boss ni Ben Loy, si Ms. Napolis, and that's the way it was yes, introduced sir. to you. That's the way she was introduced to you. Did you have any exchange of words? With Ms. Janet yes. Napolis. None, yes. sir. Marami pong guest. Ah, so hi, at least you said hi siguro or something. Mm, okay. Okay, that would be all for now. <laughs> Thank you, sir. The next one would be... Uh, before, before, before we go to the next... Ah, Senator JV would be next. Now, but before that, do you remember since Thanksgiving dinner, who would... Uh, Thanksgiving mass, who are the other guests that you saw notables. Hindi ko po kilala sir. Awala ah, ka na kilala. Um, only for the um, celebrant 
um, who happened to be Monsignor Sonny Ramirez, although I akala ko siya si Father Sonny Ramirez, pero hindi naman pala. Sonny Ramirez. Monsignor Sonny uh, Ramirez of the Divine Mercy. That's what they said. Okay. Okay. So wala ka nang nakilalang iba? Not so far. Okay. Senator J.V. Ejercito. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, uh, let me ask, uh, since the Chairperson of COA sat here, Director Susan, the Special Audit Report covered only period from 2007 up to 2009. Am I correct? Yes, sir. <clears throat> um, how long will it take for COA, for instance, to um, to audit? Um, yung three year, yung one term or three years. So for example, the 2007 to 2009 uh, is 14 Congress, no? Um, how long will it take you to audit 14 Congress, 13 Congress, or the 12th Congress? Another three years, sir, if you are going to cover this many. So, uh, is it, you do you do, uh, um, Director Susan, do you do your post, do your uh, special audit on all, on uh, after every Congress, or ito lang pong particular? Ito lang po. Ito lang po ang nagawa namin. So why is it so? Bakit ito lang? Bakit ito po yung napili nyo? O ito lang ba ang uh, ipinasa ng uh, DBM, for example, ang record sila? So why why this particular period? Ah, hindi po. Kasi ang amin pong opisina, Special Audits Office, are conducting evaluation of various projects. So inilaline up po namin yon. We audited MVUC, yung CARP, and then madami po, RICE program, bridge program. So iprinip program po namin since 2002. So, nung 2010 po, ito talaga yung naka-program namin, PIDAF. So, hindi naman po yearly we are going to conduct an audit of, of the same program. Kasi po, performance audit kami. So, tinitingnan lang namin kung ano yung mga dapat na ma-improve for its pro major program of the government. So, nung 2010 po, when we program this, ang i-audit po talaga namin, 2009, 2007, 2008, 2007. So, it took us three years to complete kasi may simultaneous audit. Di naman pa, pa rin po kami ng ibang program. Kung baga, Director Susan, uh, kung baga random, ito yung napili. Yes po, oho. Doon siya napatapat sa 2010. So, I'm, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm quite uh, interested or curious about the 2004 to 2007 because during this period, Mr. Chairman, this was the time that the administration, former administration was whose legitimacy was in question. So, probably a lot of uh, questionable releases might have happened uh, during this period. So, do you have any audit report for the tw uh, 12th Congress, 2004 to 2007? Wala po. Wala po. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Senate President, yes, along the lines yes. of uh, uh, the questions of Sen Senator Estrada uh, Ejercito, <clears throat> you said 2010 naka-program ang PIDAF special audit. Tama po ba? Yes po. At sino po, aling buwan ng 2010? Parang nag-start po kami ng May 20, 2010. May we 2010. Have, we have it signed. The May 2010, you decided to conduct a special audit on the PDAF. Uh, yes sir. Who was the chairman in May of 2010? A chairman Villar, sir. Chairman? Villar, Reynaldo Villar. Chairman Reynaldo Villar. Who appointed chairman Reynaldo Villar? Si president, then president, uh, GMA po, Arroyo. Then president, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, appointed uh, Ray Villar, Yes, sir. Who was the one who directed the special audit to be done on PIDAF? Is that yes, correct? Yes, sir. And therefore, naturally, as you said, you started to count back from 2010, the calendar year 2009, calendar year 2008, and calendar year 2007. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And therefore, it had nothing to do with this present Aquino administration. Awala po. Awala, ah, all right. And uh, uh, for the record, when did Chairperson uh, Pulido Tan assume office? 
2011 po yun eh. 2011. So, oh, uh, about a year after the order for a special audit on the PDAF was decided on by the previous chairman. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And by that time, you already had started your special audit. Yes, sir. By the time that uh, uh, Chair Pulido Tan came into the picture, you were already one year into your investigation of the PDAF uh, fund. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Senator Estrada. Uh, going back, uh, uh, ito. thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Mr. Chair, ako po yun. <laughs> Just to be clear. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, going back, uh, Director Susan, um, sabi nyo kanina, yung 2007 and 2009, random lang, no? Kung baga, nagkataon lang, no? Kasi meron kasi mga pangamba, hindi lamang yung mga akusado, minsan nababasa ko rin yung mga ibang uh, personalidad, na bakit naman na-chempong yung 2007 and 2009 lang. Nagkakaroon tuloy ng uh, pangamba, baka ito ay bakit nagiging selective. Bakit nga ho ba na natapat sa 2007 and 2009? Uh, kasi nga po, naka-schedule siya ng 2010. Kung baga po, nagawa lang kami ng mga programs eh. So, doon lang siya tumapat nung natapos na yung iba namin na uh, programa. So, ando na siya. Kung baga, sir, nakalinya lang sila, doon siya natapat na nakatapos na kami ng iba and then uh, pidaf na yung kasunod. Ito po yung special audit report. Yes po, ito. Yung 2004 to 2007 or is it at the 12 or 13 Congress, wala po kayong special audit report? Hindi, wala po, wala po. Kahit audit report, kahit hindi special, wala. Kasi po yung kami regular plan. <laughs> Wala bang ganun? <laughs> Hindi po sa amin yung regular eh. Special audit lang po kami. Kanino po yung regular? Uh, we have regular auditors po dun sa mga agencies concerned. Because uh, Mr. Chairman, I think uh, in the spirit of transparency and uh, accountability, I think every Congress has to be um, audited. No? Um, but uh, like what you said, it would take about three years to, uh, would it take three years to audit um, that those inclusive days, for example, the 12th Congress or the 13th Congress? Am I correct? Uh, yes, sir. If you are going to cover this, this many, sir. Okay, um, last point, uh, Mr. Chairman, for, uh, for this hearing. Um, it has been mentioned quite often, no? um, all, uh, three members of our colleagues, not, not that I am defending my, uh, my uh, colleagues or um, my party mates, no? but you know, in the spirit, again, in the spirit, Mr. Chairman of Transparency, I guess the Filipino people, owe it to the Filipino people to know everybody who is uh, involved in this uh, scandal or scam. Um, Director Susan, last week before uh, we wrapped up the proceedings, Aside from the three, you mentioned additional two, for which uh, uh, I think uh, our Senate President to pro tempore defended himself. Are there other um, legislators or uh, senators who uh, who also channeled or funneled their PDAF to this uh, inter, uh, um, IAs or uh, implementing agencies? No, yung yung apat na medyo name by COA na medyo regular ang pagpapag, uh, pagbibigay ng PDAF or pag ng PDAF through this implementing agency, yung ZIREC, NABCOR, TRC or NLDC, was it? Um, was, are there any other legislators? As mentioned by the Chair, there are about 160 uh, legislators. Uh, these are all named under Annex A of our report. Pages 137 to 148. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I know it might take quite a while, but I think it would be good for the committee to have those records no, uh, for future reference. And if possible, and if possible, um, can you mention, uh, is it possible to mention if there are any other senators or congressmen that are uh, not part of those regularly mentioned? You know, Mr. Chairman, just for the yes, record, Senator Dillon. the COA said that 
there, there is a listing. And this listing consists of those senators and congressmen who uh, had NGOs, uh, who utilized NGOs. But the finding of COA is that some NGOs are have not liquidated. Is that correct? Yes, sir. It doesn't mean that there is fraud already because it's just non-liquidation. Uh, yes, sir. The, the, yeah, just to clarify, because, you know, in this environment, just the mere mention that you are part of the COA report would already uh, uh, condemn you. So let us make it clear that these legislators named in the COA report, yes, indeed, utilized uh, NGOs. But not all of those NGOs are bogus. Some NGOs are valid, I would suspect, but these NGOs, even if legitimate, were not able to liquidate. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. All and if they were not able to liquidate, they are there. Ah, uh, yes, sir. They and are there, in the list. Oh. And yes, sir. Uh, the deficiencies per NGO are discussed under Annex C of the report. So, dun po makikita kung ano yung mga diferensya ng lahat ng ng transactions entered into with those eh, with those uh, NGOs. So, iba-iba nga po ang kanilang diferensya. Iba-iba ang deficiency. Opo, iba-iba uh, po ang deficiency nila. Okay. Kaya, last point, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we are zeroing on uh, the, po the Napoles uh, NGOs no? uh, with this hearing. But again, um, Mr. Chairman, with your indulgence, um, I would like to ask... Um, COA or uh, DA or whoever, are there other Napoleses um, operating uh, this way? Kasi hindi naman pwedeng isa lang. No? Kasi alam mo, Mr. Chairman, I was also a congressman for one term and uh, I noticed that doon po sa kongreso sa plenary, there are times that there are a lot of beautiful ladies around. Um, itinatawag ka namin doon, livelihood girls, kasi naglalako sila ng mga livelihood. No? In fact, they're really beautiful. It's really hard to say though at times. Kaya nga medyo natakot ako eh. Baka nasama kami. But um, in this, um, do we know of any of uh, uh, other corporations or uh, just like JNN who, you know, uh, who are uh, doing this this operandi? Do you know of any? Uh, sir, actually, nung nag-audit kami, wala naman kaming alam na, na gano'n. We just validated kung ano yung dokumento. Tinignan lang namin kung valid sila o hindi. So, kung meron pang ibang involved, hindi po namin... Kung baga, sir, yung laman na report namin is just factual. When we started that, wala pa namang gano'ng news or, or scam na napapublish. So... Talagang audit lang po yung ginawa namin. So, na-chain so, lang na talagang ito uh, lang yung... Na-cover na namin. Na-cover? Wala na yes, iba? No po. We have co yung 82 po because uh, those were the NGOs entered in into by by the agencies covered in the audit. Oh, so, madami din pa din po siguro agencies na narilisan pero hindi naman po namin sila na-sample. Siguro po, uh, in, again, in the spirit of transparency, way we be given all those copies next time uh, next year. Uh, yes, sir. Uh -huh. Although it's all here. For sir, our producer, uh -huh. no? Yes, sir. Um, uh -huh. Mr. Chan, before I end, uh, it's really sad, though, that, uh, you know, upon hearing, uh, those are questioning ni Senator Bam, that other implementing agencies, they are releasing mil hundreds of millions in pesos. And it's sad to know that they did that even uh, have the initiative to verify, at least. And these are government funds. So, you know, uh, Mr. Chairman, these are points that we really have to uh, take note of. Oh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Senator J.V. Herzito. Um, the next one is uh, Senator Po. It's not around. Senator Sani Angara. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Magandang uh, tanghali po sa ating lahat. Uh, ang tanong ko po is uh, yung scope ng special audit. Kasi ho, may selected, I think we uh, chose Mr. Chair for uh, cabinet uh, departments, tapos meron tayong tatlong regional uh, regional uh, departments of the DBM, or ano po yung percent nung, nung you know, na-audit na pondo of the GAAs for 
those specific years, uh, Your Honors, uh, whoever whoever has the knowledge, ma'am. Like, for example, one trillion yung budget, tapos ang na-audit na is, is ano. Kasi I want to proceed on the line of questioning of uh, Senator Bamakino na he's trying to zero in on the problem of corruption kasi systemic nga eh. So, I think uh, gusto natin malaman. Kasi yung special audit, hindi naman sinako pang buong GAA, eh, di, di ba? So, an anong percent? Is it 10%? Is it 15%? 20%? In terms of uh, uh, peso value ho? Uh, okay. uh, nung 2007 to 2009 po, ang uh, allocation out of PDAF is 29 billion. So we're able to cover around 8 billion. Uh, sa VILP po, it's 50 billion. But then, dun nga po sa audit namin, lumalabas na hindi lang naman 50 billion ang na-release. So, we were able to cover around 30, 30 billion. So, 38 billion ho, for for those three years. Ah, uh, yes, sir. 38 billion out of, eh, siguro yung budget nung panahon na yun is about uh, 1 trillion. Siguro, approximately, no? So, yung 38 billion for 3 trillion covering three years, it's not even 1% of, uh, hindi nga ho siya, hindi pa siya 1%, ano, of, of the... And yet, it seems that we're uncovering a whole uh, web of uh, possible. That's, I, I don't want to make any conclusions, Mr. Chair. That's not our job. No, it, it, It's really to improve the systems and the uh, institutions. But it's not even 1% of, uh, of, the, of the total uh, uh, funds released or uh, public funds uh, appropriated for those years. Right? Uh, yes, sir. So, the cause, cause of concern, uh, Mr. Chair, ano po? Uh, yung second question, yung second line of questioning naman po, yung, kasi, I want to proceed naman ho from the line of questioning of Senator Chis uh, Escudero, yung pinapoint out niya na there were certain uh, resolutions and COA circulars which were not really observed in uh, in the case of uh, of some of the implementing agencies. So I just want I'm just concerned about going forward. Ano ho ba yung publication? Are these COA for example dito sa audit ho, yung COA circular 2007001 dated October 25, 2007 which are the revised guidelines in the granting, utilization, accounting and auditing of the funds released to NGOs POs. Enforce pa rin ho ba itong mga uh, COA circulars? Ah uh, yes sir. Ah okay. So so it's enforced, no? Uh, how about the GPPB resolution number 12-207? Enforced pa rin ho ba yun? Uh, yes, sir. Actually, sir, yung provision na yun was already incorporated in the IRRA of RA 9184. I see. I see uh, Director Delantar nodding her head. No? Um, so, ang tanong ko is, is how come in response to